Uh, hi, my name is Sam. Welcome to Born Under Punches. I am the token female of this show. Um, I'm reading off of a notepad right now, and I'm sorry for doing that. Here I am with uh, Kelly, this man who's bald and owns a podcast. Oh, you used the P word. <laughs> I will never admit to that. Uh, yeah, I'm Kelly. I'm the Capitaine of Mischief on this show. And uh, I want to, uh, I'm sorry for freaking out Ian's client's wife today when I was leaving. Oh, yeah. That was funny. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, I asked her what kind of baby she had. <laughs> <laughs> And she said human. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think Sam said human. I don't think, I don't, th what was her name? Emma. 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 I don't think she knew how to respond. Cause I think I was still in like bits mode. Cause I feel like if I asked any one of you, uh, what kind of, like if you had a baby and I was like, oh, what kind of baby is that? You'd run with it and you'd be like, oh yeah, this is like a free range baby or something. Yeah. It's organic. But apparently normal people are not. They're they're too nice for that. Yeah, they're, they're real. They're just really nice people. So the moment I said like, I was like, oh, this will be funny. I'll be like, what kind of babies that. And then I was like, oh, they're probably gonna think I'm asking like what gender, and I'm like one of those people that like, really cares or something. And I was like, oh fuck, I fucked up. I have to. I now have to say something else. And then I was like, oh, I'll I'll diffuse this by being like, haha, you know, like a a a, a low fat baby. But I couldn't come up with anything good. <laughs> Because I was like, this is a good premise. I have no jokes for it, but it's a good premise. Yeah. Yeah. You just kind of said that one line and then left. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, there was no coming back from that. So I was like, I got to leave before yeah. I make this worse. They, they did mention it later. Yes. Yeah. She I just asked oh, a yes, really strange question and then disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to interrupt baby time. So. Uh, but yeah. you did. <laughs> well, <laughs> and I apologize for it. That's uh, fair. And with me today is Ian. Hey everybody, I'm Ian, and I'm the backup grip for the show. Not and the boy grip? Not the boy grip. I'm, oh. uh, I could be best boy, actually. Oh. I'm best boy. I think you're big boy, baby yeah. boy, but boy. sorry, go ahead. Because, do you ever notice that in credits? There's yeah, always, I know. There's always it's a like, best boy. It would suck to be the worst boy. Yeah. and <laughs> Best boy and naughty lad. What is and, a grip? Uh, oh, it's just, I think it's just the people that hold the boom. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I'm the backup grip. I feel like you I should really. know this, because, like, one of your best friends does that. And talks about yes. it constantly. I know he's a grip of sorts. Yeah. Yes. But is he the best grip? Uh, maybe. In your opinion? For, for, I haven't seen him grab. Oh. <laughs> or grip gripped. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I'm sure he's pretty good at it. And I'm sorry for every murder that happened on your birthday. Kelly. <laughs> on my birthday? Yeah. I'm sure one happened. What's the date of your oh, birthday? Oh, okay. I thought, I thought you were really referring to something specific, and I was like... No, I don't know. I wasn't involved. I don't know about it, but I'm just sorry about it. Okay, I got it. Yeah. You know, people always talk about which famous people they share a birthday with, but they never talk about which people they share a murder date with. A famous, a famous murder. Yeah. yeah, that's so true. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder if you have any famous murders that happened on your birthday. I feel like me going and looking something up right now is going to be way too distracting. Of course. And I will forget what I'm doing. Well, I'm done. That so, for later. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, All right. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Then you can. I'll tell you my birthday and my mother's maiden name and my uh, and your high school and mascot. my social insurance number yep. on uh, right now. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's June twentieth, two thousand one. Wow, you're very young. Two thousand one. Yeah. Yeah. Strapping. I'm very strapping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you look great for your age. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of punchy for my age, which is this is what the pillow was kind of for. That's better. You yeah. blend into the couch more, too. So yeah. The couch is giving you a little Yeah, hug. it's camouflage. And, you know, anyone who's listening to this audio is going to just not get that experience. And oh, yeah. I want, right. no, I want them to be punished for it. They should be watching the video. Mm. So are you going to introduce uh, our last uh, co-host here, or are you just going to check Oh, yeah, yeah. Check out? And uh, to my right here, I have uh, Adam. Don't tell us about Hi. what you're up to. My name is Adam, and I'm sorry for stealing your bike. And uh, I create bulleted lists for this show. That is what I create. That is my role. <laughs> <laughs> That's an important role. When you create a bulleted list, do you put arrows or lines or dots? Dots. Hmm. Oh, I, I think in a bulleted list, like a list of people to shoot. That could be oh. a list that then you make. Kinda, you're in the same page murdering. with murders. Yeah. But you still have to decide like what you're going to put in front of each bullet point 
Well, it's got to be a bullet because oh. it's like this This one's got your name on it. You know how they talk about bullets got your name on it? They're talking about like a Word document uh, with bullet-shaped points. I'm a dot man and myself, isn't... but yeah. Yeah. I always draw arrows. See, I used to draw arrows when I was like uh, in high school. I don't mean that in like an offensive way, but then yeah, I realized that that was- simple? No, it just, fashioned? it's a lot of effort <laughs> to draw an arrow for every point if there are many points. A dot's just coming along? simplified. Uh, yeah, there's actually a lot of deaths. Oh. Hmm. Muhammad Ali? The Muhammad Ali died on my birthday. Yes, what? he did. Um, wow. Like the big boxing fan? Oh, no, not the when I was born, because he was alive when I was alive. He uh, just died on my birthday. There was a, uh, a entire plane of people. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, shit. Like a plane um, of existence? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> just wiped out on my birthday. Yeah. And it, it's too bad it was the cool reality, the one oh. that we all aspired to get to. Oh, I know. Because um, this is not it. No, this isn't it. And a, uh, a, a gangster, Benjamin Bugsley Seagal. Do you yeah. think we're better off now that he's dead? Uh, yeah, you're apologizing for killing the gangster? Yo, gangsters are people yeah, too. Fine. Oh, yeah, they, they just do crimes. They're sorry. Are yeah. they? Sometimes. And they crimes are if, you, if you get them on this. Oh, and then uh, 111 Chinese workers in a in a coal mine. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> crimes could just be subversive. I'm glad behaviors. you apologize for that one because that one is a little egregious. It is a little, yeah, it is egregious. It's, I think it's uncontentionally a bad thing. Do you like, think all these I mean, people? Does, like, where you're reading this, is there a little entry on like whether, like, maybe some of them deserved it? Like, we're asking for it. <laughs> oh yeah, they were all racist. Oh, Chinese people are so <laughs> racist. Have <laughs> yeah, you they, noticed this? They. <laughs> So, yeah, there you go. They people don't, people don't like to hear that Chinese coal miners are racist, but, you know, I'm, I'm saying Is that. that like a 100% thing? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's, it's, and it's not a stereotype. It's just true. And speaking of things people don't want to hear, uh, I have a very special segment planned for you guys. Ooh, a okay. segment. Segments. Yeah, yeah. Because you know comment. how we were talking about how uh, segments are bad and hack? We mm -hmm. just don't have them. We mm -hmm. have segments. Yeah, we don't. Oh, yeah. They're right. Cool. Yes. Oh. Smeglements. I that was. Oh, smeglements. We should have gone with that. It's too late. I already wrote. I already like oh. filed the paperwork. Did you say. Damn it. Smeglements. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this segment is still called uh, Untitled Game Show Segment. Ooh. And it doesn't have a theme yet. So uh, does one you want to hum the theme? Uh, <laughs> Untitled <laughs> Se Seglament <laughs> That's good. Let's do a few more takes. Um can you can you get the title in there? Untitled game show segment. Okay. Uh, all you man. <laughs> game show. Segment. That was very death block. I liked that. Yeah, yeah. That was what I was going for. I that was, was that was really block. good. Uh I do think that um <laughs> Yeah. The only instrument is a double kick drum. <laughs> it's all that's needed. Well, thing. I mean, but arguably the vocal is also an instrument. So I I'm wondering so. if I, I don't want to shit on what you did. Yeah. Well, but the thing is, I don't think you should be doing more instruments. I'm wondering if, like... I should. No, I should. <laughs> I think you should, actually. What if we had someone on the kick drum and someone on the vocal? Okay. No, I think you should just do more instruments. More. Okay. All right, yeah, add the guitar, try, add the guitar to that. I'm going to drink some beer. Okay. It's way too much to keep track of in my mind. Yeah. I, okay. I, I do like the idea of... You're not a mind guy. <laughs> um, I had the book learning tap. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, that was nice. You're already in the cowboy segment. We'll just skip it. Hmm. Yes. Right. Perfect. Well, I tried. <laughs> All right. So here's the. Here's what we're doing. Everyone knows the people who are on this show are truly its biggest fans. And <laughs> of those fans, <laughs> The like the hardest core super fans are you three. That's why you're here today. And, you know, that's just how it is. You're you're there for every stream. You're there, you know, throwing us likes on Twitter. You're I love you, Twitter. You've you've seen every episode at least once. You can quote all the good bits. 
have a tier one subscription on Twitch. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and so I decided we were going to have a, uh, a showdown of who knows this show the best. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so Sweet. obviously it would be cheating to offer questions about like episodes you had been on. Uh, but we've got a good log- backlog now. I think we, depending on how you count it, about 25 episodes to choose from. So I've gone into some episodes that none of you have been on. And we're going to see how much you remember from these things that you've definitely seen, shared with your friends. Yeah. Um, well, I'm giving not, me positive feedback for. Yeah, I'm not like narcissistic. I don't watch the episodes I'm in. I yeah, just, that'd, I just be, watch that'd be ones, weird. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. So here's what I think we'll do is... Um, well, last time I felt like leaving the the counting to the end was a bit like a bit lopsided. So all of you will write down your answer and then you'll like reveal at the same time. You could even reveal the camera if you want with a piece of paper. And yeah, and then we'll do like a running tally of the score. Sounds great. So you right. ask question, we write, reveal, tally. Yeah. Cool. I win. So, you think you're gonna win? I, I, I know. <laughs> gonna, you gonna must win. be pretty good. Yeah, yeah, pretty Gene's got a memory like comp- a steel trap. That's right. Nothing Gene. in, nothing out. <laughs> <laughs> his memory is as sharp as his eyes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. So, question one. This is about a character that I played, Angina Pectoris. Mm. <laughs> All right. In the story arc spanning episodes three to five, what is the name of Angina Pectoris's ventriloquist dummy? Is it a endo b recto c procto or d colon like c-o-l-i-n like colon powell colon powell yeah Mm. can i hear those one more time yeah well you can't read the screen Mm? (laughs) all (laughs) right actually you know what fuck it i I got it i cannot read the screen you're good yeah sure okay what is c a endo no, no, just B, what is C? Recto. What is C? No, I'm doing the whole list. Oh my god. Okay. A endo B recto you. C procto or D colon. Well, I watched this episode this so many times. Version of two two different names. Isn't it weird how when you watch a thing so many times it blurs together in a way that you actually forget it? Yeah, yeah. that happens to me a lot like right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm locked in. I'm, you're all locked I'm, in. I'm ready. Second, I'm ready. All right. Let's reveal it. I wrote it really small. I don't think that's going to work. No, it's well, it's super poorly lit. I'm just going to tell you the correct answer and you react accordingly. Okay. Uh, the correct answer was endo. Oh. Uh, Woo! I'm just kidding. I wrote procto. I wrote procto too. I wrote recto. I was like, what's the most inappropriate name here? I would never. Surely Kelly would pick that one. <laughs> it was just endo? It was endo. Just endo with the ventriloquist dummy. Hmm. Oh, because he's like, you, I guess that makes sense because you put your yeah. hand inside. I thought him. Procto because you're like, pro- Proctologist. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. those are That'd all be pretty good. I feel like you could have Endo and Procto and they could be like, you know, a brother, brother duo. That is right. We should bring them back that character. We'll, we'll bring in a, a sibling. All right. All right. I'm Question ready. two. So in episode 11, the Stevedores Union, uh, we improvised a whole bunch of segments. Which of these was not improvised in that episode. A, Compliments Corner. B, David's Enemy Corner. C, Weeb Dreams. Or D, The Holiday Zone. Put your pen up to your nose when you're to indicate. No, like put it in your nose to indicate you're done. No, you're not done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I don't see. See, he's oh, got Sorry. Oh. All right. Uh, the answer was C, Weeb Dreams. Man. I would never allow such a segment. You wouldn't? No. Are you a weeb too? No. Oh, no. no. This is upsetting our balance. No one is. Uh, no. Yeah. Oh. None of us are black. Of- <laughs> oh, my God. Please tell this story because that was so fucking funny. <laughs> what? what? So- <laughs> I, I was under the impression that a weeb was not just someone who was like really into anime, but they had to be black as well. And this is just based on the fact that in high school we had we only had like two weebs, but they were both the uh, black dudes, and they're like, oh man, like the weebs are like Naruto running again. 
<laughs> so were you just quietly like, wow, they're so racist? I, I was like, guys. wow, this is a very specific term for like black guys who are into anime. Hmm. So yeah. And then it just like recently came up and he told me and I was like, wow, that, I'm glad you found out that with me. <laughs> Not- <laughs> Wait, when did, how recently did you find this out? Like days oh, ago. Oh, like days ago. <laughs> Because I, I don't know much about anime <laughs> at all or any of that stuff. So I feel so, like uh, we in previous <laughs> times yeah. doing this show, we called you like a weeb right then and there. And you were just kind of like, wow, they should leave that out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was kind of confused about it. But I was like, maybe there's something to this I don't understand. But and turns out it was true. Hmm. Question three. In episode 19, a flow state of torturing Santa. How is the <laughs> Prince of Christmas described? Is it A, Oscar Wilde cosplaying as Gerard Way, B, Rowan Atkinson cosplaying as Kaiser Wilhelm II, C, David Bowie cosplaying as a member of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, or D, Princess Diana cosplaying as Prince Philip? (laughs) I think I actually know this one. Really? Yeah. I may have used that phrasing more than once. Hmm. Uh, the correct answer was A, Oscar Wilde cosplaying as Gerard Way. Yes. God damn it. Were you wrong? Yeah, I thought it was C. What was C again? David Bowie cosplaying as a member of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Yeah. Did you get a single one, right? I have n- I not. Have Have you gotten one, right? No. No, <laughs> No, but neither have you. I've got one, right? That's really bad luck for how much you guys know. I know. Yeah. Like, it's just kind of weird. Off day. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Unlucky. Question four. Uh, in episode 20, which is the slur we kind of sort of said by accident? Was it A, the A word, B, the G word, C, the Q word, or D, the X word? I actually know what, this What one. are those? Yeah, could yeah, you? Could you yeah. I, don't, I, don't know I mean, you know. I don't. You said I don't. It. I don't. I the fuck is the X no, word? It was said. Oh, of course. You only listened to the censored version yeah. after it was edited. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't even know what letter it started with. <laughs> Wow, it looks like well, I'm the biggest well, fan. You know what? It's <laughs> I've already forgotten what the words are. Those those words kind of just roll off me like water off a duck's back. Yeah, but could you remind me really They're quick? They're not internalized for you. You wouldn't allow that to happen. Uh, the answer was C, the Q word. <laughs> Nailed it. Fuck yeah. That was from like a reading, Sad. wasn't it? It was from a reading, yeah. Just came it was it. The, the erotica was racist. It's not me. Yeah. That's why I don't apologize for it. I just apologize for being horrible to people's babies. You can you can bleep that out if we say it though, right? Yeah, I bleeped it out in the original oh, because okay. I uh, under public pressure from Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of question five, which show guest was foolish enough to allow Nicole and I to guest on their podcast? Was it a Australian culture podcast, Australian Gothic, in which we discussed Rosalie Norton, a subversive artist who was arrested for obscenity? B. Shipwreck podcast, Beyond the Breakers, in which we discussed a, the runway airplane fire that killed Stan Rogers. C. Ocean Science podcast, It Came from the Sea, in which we finally learned where eels fucked. <laughs> or D. Movie trivia podcast, Emily Missed Out, in which we discussed the artistic merits of the movie, A Serbian Film. Oh, Jesus. I mean, I could see you doing any of those, but I think I... Mm. Mm, oh. Mm. Hmm. Mm, what was C again? Eel fucking. Okay. Mm. All right. Question master. All right. Are we good? <laughs> Correct. We are good. Oh yeah. Sorry. The answer was <laughs> the answer was A. Ah, oh, it changed Ugh. it from Drat. A to C because I remember there was the eel fucking. I do remember the eel fucking thing too. Well, we did learn where eels fuck. Uh, where it was brought fuck? up. They they fuck in the Sargasso Sea. Sargasso Sea, like that's the only place in the entire world where yeah, where eels so will fuck. it's the only fuckable place. Yeah, so if eels. I remember correctly, well, like, I mean, I think this is still for some debate. Is like, are they shy? Are they prudes? Are they like trying to hide their numbers? We don't know, hmm. but. From what I understand, they uh, they basically the way they figured it out was there was like the only place they were finding young eels. Yeah, 
because it's like a years long journey they do or something. I don't know. The more I talk, the more I'm going to be incorrect. So I'm just going to stop. I don't know why, but I was like the way that they found out. I was like, I think I know. I'm like, yes, they dressed up like a sexy eel. <laughs> and like, Ooh, I'm a pretty lady. Ooh, I'm a pretty eel lady. And I'm ready to fuck. <laughs> Do you think the eel would try to mount your fake eel? The fake eel. Oh, you think hmm. it would? It would go for it. Yeah, I think. I think eels are. Or did they do the weird thing where they like eject eggs and then the male eel would just like come all over them? <laughs> like they, yeah, like they do like a little bukkake all yeah. over there. We don't know. I mean, now we know apparently, but have they been caught fucking? I don't think so. I think they just deduced <laughs> where the eels fuck. Okay, that was my understanding. That's still very well, mysterious. Uh, yeah, I think sharks are like that too. They don't really know where they fuck as well. We'll have to ask. Question six: Many. Uh, meaning all local breweries have either directly or indirectly declined to be involved with the show. Which brewery fucked me over in that the owner excitedly planned a time to meet me and then ghosted me outside his own brewery? <laughs> wow, this is just a personal, like, yeah. personal question. Just yeah. About a so very I'm, private detail of his life. Gra- <laughs> I'm going to smile the whole time so that you can't tell who I'm mad at. Yeah. <laughs> is it A, Polar Park? B, Bent Stick? C, C change, or D, Strathcona Spirits? I think that would be good uh, for the next uh, que- like game show thing. Is just ask questions that only I would know the answer to. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> All right. Just airing his dirty laundry. Today. Yeah, right. well, this is the great thing about having <laughs> no audience is you can actually shit talk anyone and they'll never know. <laughs> Uh, the answer was A, Polar oh, Park. I knew Fuck yeah. Polar Park. I do remember that one. They're, they're, they're you remember kind of, that? Yes. I don't I remember telling you about you're, that. You're, you're, sorry? I don't remember telling you about that. No, you told me. Oh. You're mad. <laughs> you're real mad. On this you mean list? you remember it from, well, I guess this wasn't even on the show. In this list. Yeah, yeah I know. It was just like a This question thing. was to see who my best friend is. The oh. question I asked myself yeah, is who here has a terrible reputation and the answer was Polar Park. Do they? They don't have a great reputation. Really? Yeah. Let's get into really it. Know. It's this is now Adam's enemy corner. No, I think they're just they're 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 not a great venue. You know. I agree. You're top <laughs> preaching to the choir here. Not a great venue. I've never even heard of them, honestly. So. Well, now you know why. I thought they were made up. All right, so this is where we're gonna pay the clips. So the question is, which former guest is a marine biologist? So I'm gonna get you to play those four clips in order. A, Tanner. Um, stay away from Norwegian ships. Uh, that is actually um, one of my very good friends, uh, Taylor, my co-host, uh, who's chiming in there, um, saying stay away from Norwegian ships. Very good mm-hmm. advice. B, Jesse. Um, you could get it killed by a halibut, I think. They're really, I bet they would be really strong in like a fight if you like put it up next to your head and they just slapped you. Um, really muscly fish like a tuna, like a full... Big ass tuna. I bet they could kill you if they whapped you with the tail. I don't know how that would happen, but if you froze it and then swung it like a sword. Yes. C. Sarah. I feel like we've kind of lost the thread there. I, I'm still not certain what a eels. Fish is. Eels are probably the most sexual and sexy, like classical fish. Okay. Or D. Lucas. Thing. I saw a sleeping gray nurse shark, and that That's was an cute. experience that was. Yeah, that was an experience that I was just like, this is so cool. And like, I was about five meters away from it. The visibility was kind of shit. We sort of saw it emerging out of the fog and we kind of like kneeled on the sand and watched it. Well, like Aww. when they sleep, they just hang there. And I was just I'm like, just oh my chilling. God, I'm so close to a shark. This is so cool. And yeah, that Jeez. was, that was wonderful. And then I ate a mango at the bottom of the water. You're all good? Mm-hmm. It is. Oh, he's still thinking. I'm thinking. Don't overthink it, but don't underthink it either. <laughs> Yeah, I'm have ready. you tried doing it right? That's probably what I would do. I I usually don't try to do things right. Sure. <laughs> sure. My grandpappy taught me. You good? Mm-hmm. Uh, the correct answer was B. Jesse. Bob. Wow. Uh, Bob. That was my second choice. Yeah, who'd you all guess? Uh, C. Sarah. You fucking made me overthink that. Who, who did you guess? Fault. Sarah. Did you all guess Sarah? Yeah. yeah. That's very funny. Because uh. She I knows thought, about the eels. I saw the eel clip and I was just like, oh, eels, sexy eels. <laughs> this lady yeah. likes eels. She's super into eels. That means yeah. she must be a marine. Wait, yeah. she, she squeals for them. It was Je- Jesse, the guy squeals talking about tuna? Squeals for eels. Yeah. <laughs> huh. 
Huh. Meals, meals, fetish meals on equals eels. marine biologist. You know that whole like dolphin uh, marine biologist love affair story, right? Yeah, very Maybe sad. She had that it's with tragic. the eels. Yeah, she was pro giving uh, dolphins hand jobs. I believe was the thing. It's hot, ultra hot, ultra hot, totally ethical. <laughs> the most ethical type of hand job <laughs> to a dolphin <laughs> <laughs> that you're trying to coerce into learning English. <laughs> Oh, I think I know what you want. Maybe you'll learn English now. Hmm. Eel fantasy. All right. Question eight. In episode 18, keep salt away from this man's dick. Who did Josie say is her favorite fascist? (laughs) Was it A, Benito Mussolini, Duce of Italian fascism? B, Joseph Goebbels, chief propagandist for the Nazi party? C, Pol Pot, General Secretary of the Communist Party of Kampuchea, or D, Napoleon Bonaparte, Emperor of the French? Freaking I'm... Which one's most bangable, do you think? Oh. Goebbels is uh, Goebbels kind of gross. Large, sweaty it... man. Oh, I'm thinking of someone else. A different Nazi. Hitler was very svelte. Yes, <laughs> very, yes, yeah. Yeah, he had, he had an interesting mm-hmm. allure in that sense. You good? Oh. oh, okay. No, I'm just asking. I have no idea. Well, no, we have to figure, we have to figure out this first problem. I know. I was trying to. Th- who's, who's the, the sexiest? Who's the, fascist? the most? Who bangable. is the sexiest fascist? That's what we're gonna start asking. <laughs> I do who think is the sexiest, sexiest member fascist. of yeah. the Nazi party? Yes, exactly. And you can't say Goebbels because we've all <laughs> it's Rommel, obviously. Don't say right? Goebbels. Which one was the one that did all the propaganda stuff? That's that's Goebbels. Oh, is it? Mm. Oh, I'm confusing uh, Goebbels with another guy. Well, stay tuned for our upcoming ranking of all the Nazis from least to most fuckable. <laughs> oh, yes. Goebbels is skinny. <laughs> I should like have kind of Goebbels and I got Mongolian dude. gerbil. I was going to say it. Ooh, gerbil. I'd fuck a Mongolian gerbil. Well, I wouldn't say he's hot. <laughs> 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 he has glasses, yeah. No, he's kind of like this dude. Yeah. He's a filmmaker. He's an auteur. Yeah. He made unreproducible works of art. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he didn't really give us him. some good choices. I think you're thinking of Rommel, actually. Uh, no, I'm thinking of, uh, I don't know who I'm thinking of. I'd have to look at all the members of the Nazi party's names. And well, let's just wrap off the Rommel? board. Let's all go around tell the room. Tell me the name. And each of you tell me which, which fascist in general you would want to fuck. Just the, all of them. Mm. Stalin. Oh yeah, he's 100%. got the, young he the mustache red situation. Have you seen pictures of young Stalin? He's Not really. A very good looking man. Oh, I'll check it out. Oh, young Alex Jones. Oh, he's hot. You would call him a uh, fascist. Oh, What's that movie that he's in? Uh, it's like an animated Waking film. Life. Yeah, that's that's such a fucking. Good it was very scene. trippy when I someone was like, "Let me show you this cool rotoscope movie," and I was like, "This dude looks so much like." And Alex then it's Jones. Alex Jones. It just yeah. is Alex Jones. I know. Back I when he was a countercultural hero, because all we knew about him was yeah. that he was like, "Well, this guy criticized George Bush. Mm-hmm. He must be cool." His like, uh, his delivery like style is just so preachy. Looks like Tomas. Yeah, it's very like Southern it's preacher. Young. Joseph Stalin kind of looked like a little Thomas. bit, yeah. He's got a nice look. Oh, you can fuck Kanye West now. He's a fascist. Oh. Moss just ha- he does have a big mustache like that now too. He does. Yes, he's working on his young Stalin mustache. Working on my. I feel young like every time we see someone with a big mustache and like, I, I media, I'm just like, oh, it's Tomas. I know. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, okay, my I'm, I'm gonna guess Mussolini then for for the. All right. Well, then uh, what, I thought Mussolini as well. I put pulpit. It was Pol Pot. Nice. Pot, yeah. She was very emphatic about it. He was a nasty lad. I don't even know what he looks like. I'm a nasty bangable? lad. I'm a he nasty lad. He looks a lot like Elon Musk. Really? <laughs> yes. Have you seen like the side by side of it? It's really good. Yeah, you, you're a phone guy. You've committed to the bit. Look it up. You're the phone guy. <laughs> uh, while you're looking that up, question nine. What is the name of the first episode? Is it A, Cancel Quest, B, Gross Peak, C, Gorilla T, or that's T E E, or D, there are demons coming at you and aliens trying to fuck your brain and stuff. That's a wild title if that's yeah. the title. I feel like uh, if I was doing like a multiple choice exam, I'd be like, that's a, that's a, that's like, that's a throwaway answer. You know, it's too different than the rest. Mm. But it could be like that thing where I overthink it and it actually is. That. Oh, don't use that end. How many questions is this, by the way? Ten. 
10? Okay. I was yeah. like, this isn't going to be like 50. the PowerPoint. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Okay. Uh, during. And we're gonna we're gonna edit this part out where I go grab a beer because I have to remember what the answer to the next one is. Give me give me a sec. Okay. I was thinking of Herman Goering. He was like notoriously incompetent and he is not a very pretty looking person. And he was one of the Nazis? Yeah. It was probably like a BuzzFeed article that's like his top ten. <laughs> I'm gonna look I'm just gonna straight up look up like sexiest. who is the sexiest fascist. She Wolf of the SS. This is I got a movie poster. Oh, ooh la la! Wait, let me say that again. Jeez. Oh Jeez. wow! Stacked no. milf. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Love a stacked. <laughs> Love milf. a stacked milf. Damn. How stacked is she? Oh, quite very stacked. quite stacked. Really. Plus, yeah. her shirt is like bursting open, so it like accentuates the her, stackedness. Yeah, but she you she doesn't really need to. It's true. Am I? Uh, let's rank these ten fascist dictators by hotness. <laughs> Number one, Joseph Stalin. There Told you, you. Yeah. You're really oh. zooming in there. Yeah, well, I needed to see what. Yeah, no. Hmm. 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 What's her cup size? Estimate it. Did you say her or your? Her. Oh. That would be a very strange <laughs> question to That's ask funny. somebody. Well, sometimes you ask <laughs> women strange questions. Right? Estimate <laughs> it right now in front of me. <laughs> uh, I think she is like at least like a double D. Like they sit very high. They do. Yeah. Good for her. Wow, we got like this. This list is very interesting. George Bush made the list. Really? You call him a fascist? Most people. That that's yeah. People. You could I call mean, the tank. He's gonna be upset. You called Stalin a fascist, but of course. Uh, the answer is a cancel quest. Mm. Oh. oh, nice! I got it. Me nice. too. You jealous? I went. I went with the Panic of the Disco length one. Uh, okay, so this question we're gonna do a little different. I'm gonna ask the question. And Ian is going to give an answer with no prompts. Okay. Just what you think it is. And then I'm going to give the options, and then these two are going to pick which of the four they think it is. Okay. Make sense? Sure. So the question is, how many episodes has Ian been on, including the Christmas slideshow? I just have to guess how many I've been on. Well, I mean, you were literally there. I know. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Seven? Seven? Is that your guess? Yes. All right. So the options are A, five, B, six, C, seven, or D, eight. Wow, you didn't make it easy. Yeah. There's no, yeah, there's it's just a, a range. Hmm. I can tell you guys it could be any of those. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh... All right. So what were your answers? Eight. B. Uh, the correct answer was eight. Eight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Did you forget the one where you were a guest? <laughs> did you? Oh, I, I did. I did. <laughs> you no, mean that's you weren't working of, That's very kind of you to say that there was any sort of calculating <laughs> whatsoever. That's really nice. Yeah. Well, I I'm trying to atone for my sins by being more nice. Yeah. That was really nice. What's the What's the score right now? Uh, I've got three. I have four. I have three as well. All right. Well, Damn, I guess I'm the winner. Mm. Winner, winner. And you won the prize. Oh, sick. Fuck. There's a prize. He's going to get an ethical hand job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a dolphin. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, damn it. First ever. ethical hand job I've ever given. This is cool. Wow. 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 That's, yeah. actually, that's actually nice. That is very nice. That's, that's nice. Yeah, well, you know, Merry Christmas. What does an iris taste like? Uh, oh, wait. First, are they flowers or are they like. No, they're the parts of the eye. They harvest yeah. people's <laughs> eyeballs to make that. Wow. Is that that's why they're blue? They only harvested them from pure yeah. blood Aryans. Back to our uh, Nazi themes. Yeah. This was earlier. Hitler's favorite uh, spirit. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was actually from his bunker. It's been unopened <laughs> since the forties. Amazing. It's the one that it's what turned him evil Magellan in the first rum, place. Or, uh, gin. Yeah. He turned evil by not drinking gin. Yeah, that's right. By saving it for too long. Interesting. He would choose a French gin. That's why he invaded France to get more. Mm, oh yeah. Sorry, yeah. No. So this microphone is creating a shadow that makes it look like a dribbled beer all it down my does. shirt. <laughs> I was I was looking at that earlier, oh, yeah, and I yeah. was like, "Wow!" Kelly's I was looking a mess. at the camera, and I was like, "Uh oh, oh weird." Have I been really anyway? Have I been a sloppy lad? Have I been the methy boy? <laughs> We're gonna move on to our game, I think. Right on, sweet. And this is uh, this is where I'm gonna drop in the game theme, which I I'm just not gonna fuck with right now. It's a good it's a good sound. It's good if you want to quack along to it, you can. Also, I I do encourage people to do a jaunty dance to it, so. 
It's hard to sit in this chair. Yeah, you're also carrying like a very full uh, candle holder of wine, so. It's not that full, it's only like two thirds full. You just have to be a gyroscope. I think it's a third empty. You can't. Your best mistake. What is a mole? Yeah. It's a unit of measurement. Mm. Mm. Yeah. For a surprise. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the. Oh, you already jumped on the bit I was going to do. The, you know, I'll just edit you out. It's a unit of measurement. <laughs> you know what? Fuck you. Bastard. <laughs> for a surprise. No, it's a unit of measurement for... Rat, think, uh, fuck. So when uh, Catholics used to do a pilgrimage to the Pope, hmm. and the... The Pope? You, the Pope. Oh, you do a pilgrimage to meet the Pope and like kiss yep, his feet, gotcha. right? Because the there boat. were way fewer people <laughs> in the planet back then and like fewer Christians and all this. So... You know, one, uh, once every 10 years, you I'll would go, go on a pilgrimage pope, pope. to go kiss the Pope. <laughs> well, he had a Pope boat. There was no Pope mobile yeah. because they didn't have bulletproof glass. Oh, he had a Pope wagon. So in the Middle East, yeah. no, he had a Pope boat because it was like, yeah. well, the only way they're not going to be able to hit me with arrows because they were still worried about getting shot mm. was to be out on the ocean and just like screaming things to shore. Yes. And be like, yes, blessed are the me because the pope, pope just quotes Jesus like that's their thing. Yeah. <laughs> so when you did your pilgrimage. Uh, the unit of distance that was the exact length of the Pope's chamber, because at the entrance of it was where they would check you for weapons to make mm. sure you wouldn't like stab the Pope or whatever. So that last mole, which is exactly uh, 14 and a half feet. That's too small. 68 feet. The last 68 feet. Uh, Did you make that number up? 68 feet was a mole. So okay. that, that last 68 feet between you and the Pope was the holy mole. Huh. That's kind of yeah. interesting. Yeah, has a pope ever successfully been s assassinated? I'm pretty sure they have. Mm, that's uh, that's dope. Surely one. Well, actually, no, like, dope. would you look at the <laughs> list of popes? Which I mean, obviously, you've looked at the list of popes. Who hasn't? I have not actually. But when you scroll through it, <laughs> should though. Uh, the first like 50 popes were all murdered. Like, yeah, because it's just like <laughs> martyred, martyred, martyred. Pope Manjaro. Like, yeah, like someone. Well, because like you know, Christianity was you know not uh it was not exactly kosher at the beginning mm -hmm. and so it's like all right we're having another pogrom against christians we got to oh, throw Martin. the pope into like a vat of boiling oil and it's like fuck all right gotta elect a new pope i like i like saying that christianity wasn't kosher it's like yeah, <laughs> yeah that was the joke i'm glad you explained yeah, no, it and highlighted oh, okay it. sorry i thought it was a uh unintentional but i thought it was great yeah you're just way smarter than i thought yeah, I, I'm good at deceiving people. <laughs> or you're good at deceiving them into thinking that you're smart by pretending that you came up with the joke. That's right. Now we have completely disseminated this bit. <laughs> well, okay, we gotta play the uh, gotta play the intro again. And this time, just launch into your spiel the moment it's over. I know what a bully is now. I feel like I'm rich. Welcome to the Pope Boat. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do some role playing. Yay! And we're going to do something fun. We're going to re rehash an old adventure that was played with three different two two extra di no two different other people keep going keep going yeah, you're gonna I'm get it. it you're gonna get it so they're gonna know exactly what was going on on the previous adventure i i, don't, I feel like i don't even need to recap at all that's right <laughs> well i mean they've watched every episode they're not on so ah, yes well we know adam has for sure of course he's the biggest fan i won yeah yeah yeah, yeah. wow yeah. so so adam why don't you recap the story yeah, so yeah. far I, of what's I, honestly, happened with these cowboy well, characters I, I lost my my book that had the adventure in it how so, did you yeah. lose a book easily <laughs> <laughs> did you burn it uh no nothing that like, cool. did you lose it in I your probably... house or like did you leave it at your friends when you were playing D? &D? It's probably that one okay yeah so we, it's just like at evan's we house. usually drink a lot oh it is at evan's house you're right <laughs> actually i left it there last time you mm. you nailed it kelly knows you better than you do <laughs> yeah wow I know. I, well, what do i win i want a prize oh uh you win What's... Uh, just 
just a great, a good compliment. You're good. You're a good guy. Thanks, man. <laughs> it's the nicest thing anyone's ever yeah, said not, to me. That's good. That's the nicest thing. You're a good guy. Yeah. I will do a recap. That's okay. fair. Um, so, uh, in this fantasy cowboy adventure land that we were in, uh, last time, uh, the only what's what's your character's name again, Kelly? Oh well, the character that I was playing was. Are oh, you playing McCullough. someone different? Well, I I did write up a new character. Oh, okay. Well, okay. They all they all died. The last three adventurers. They 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 got to this town. It was. Yeah. Um. No, no, no. He's playing a repeat character. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah. All right. We're doing a really good job making this not confusing. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Solid. Okay. So, yeah, you guys, you guys, uh, you were in this caravan. You're going to a town, um, where it had magical powers. Where the more rough and tough and root and tootin' you were, the more magically imbued with powers you became. What kind of powers are we talking about? We're ta- uh, we're talking, we're talking. Uh, well, no one actually tried to use any of the magical powers, so we have zero idea. I don't think idea. we got powers. I thought we just kind of regenerated our injuries and our diseases. No, no, it was Wolverine. mentioned multiple times that it, it gave you magical powers, but no one ever, it, it like... So we just had to try, like, arbitrary magic? Well, no, I, I told you, it made you, like, be able to do man, manly, manly tough guy stuff mm. better. So oh, okay. if you tried to do, like... Something like you, so you know, could like drink beer and smoke a pipe extra good, or yeah, what? or like you're like, or yeah, just something like it's like I, it's like there's a, uh, you know, the door is locked and you're like, well, I just, just kick I, I just put my thumb in my, my my belt strap and I kick it down like that kind of stuff. Hmm. So yeah, I did a tough guy thing after I got powers. I went and crouched behind someone and uh, allowed them to get pushed over over me. That's the toughest thing you can do. Yeah, that was it, very tough. It was tough. And you did. They did die, so yeah. Mm. So that was a uh, the previous uh, batch of uh, adventurers, and so we still have what? What was your character's name? Flint Steel. Flint Steel um, has somehow managed to survive uh, in the town, uh, and I guess a collateral incident that happened when uh, your previous character, um, Tug McCuller, mm-hmm. Tug McCuller. Uh, he was just fe- a fe- enfeebled and diseased orphan, right? Yeah, he had scrofula, and <laughs> uh, I think that was the main thing with scrofula. Uh, <laughs> Give me a uh, common symptom of scrofula. You get these big, uh, it's like a tuberculosis symptom, and you get mm. all these, uh, like, buboes on your, like, skin and shit. You, That yeah. sucks. Yeah. So we'll just say he, he died of terminal scro- scrofulosis. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So he is no longer with us. That's right. Plus that orphan's heart. Um, and then uh, there was another character. I forgot their name. Whatever. They're dead as well. Jessamine Goldie Ear, uh, Dirty Ears Goldbloom. Oh right. Oh yeah. She got her ears cleaned. Yeah. And no, she's not dead. She she, she rode off into the sunset. She rode off into the sunset. She's yeah, doing she great completed now. Completed her quest. And I also uh, she also gained a tooth. I believe. Hmm. She only had two. She gained several teeth. Oh, she was wow. doing great. Yeah, that's right. She was. So yeah. Well, uh, how about we just introduce our new batch of characters and we'll hook them up with a good old no oh, is that Flint, kind of role playing steel oh yeah well this this is a cowboy adventure there's nothing not, nothing tougher than fucking a dude <laughs> <laughs> what about fucking a dude in a ford that's right that's right <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of my horse ford <laughs> oh dear mine's ford f-150 yeah ford <laughs> f-150 yes <laughs> he's lifted <laughs> Yeah, I gave him an extra set of knees. Exactly. All of the big God. like GMC fans that are listening are going to be like, "Oh, she thinks it's tough to fucking afford, eh? <laughs> Fuck it's way me. tougher to fucking a Dodge Ram. <laughs> That's right, or a, a Honda Ridgeline. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ian. <laughs> I know, I know. I would love to imagine like a real redneck guy who just loves Japanese cars. Like, yeah, I drive a Honda Ridgeline. Nothing tougher than the Japanese. That's right. <laughs> he's like a redneck weeb. Yeah. Oh yes, he's really into samurais and like he wears, he owns. The kitanas. only time I'm not driving my truck is when I'm Naruto running, <laughs> <laughs> which is usually to my Honda Ridgeline. Yeah, but it's jacked up really high, so he has to like do like the trampoline to bounce in kind of thing. Yeah, he has to do like a yeah. perfectly coordinated triple jump. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, why don't why don't you uh, we'll do some character introductions here? Who's 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 up on the roster? 
All right, so I'll introduce my character. Uh, so I, I, when I thought we were doing a, a standalone Cowboy Christmas, which didn't materialize, I was like, well, I got to have a standalone Cowboy character. And, uh, oh, you know what? Let's get some Cowboy hats going. Mm. 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 Yes. Mm. Everyone pull out the Cowboy hats you brought. All right. All right, so we're back after that word from our sponsors. This is the one I didn't want. All right, so my character is uh, haggard and bewildered. Uh, my background, uh, an intrusive busybody of a relative. Uh, I was prodding in my cousin-in-law's garage at a holiday party and stumbled across a time-traveling DeLorean. A little too inquisitive for my own good, I accidentally bumbled my way to traveling back to the Old West, uh, where I now find myself. So you're just a straight-up modern-day dude in cowboy times? A lady, yeah. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> A lady, actually. <laughs> Sorry, Haggard is a classic. Yeah, Woman's well, I, lo name. I love to yeah. be a I love to be a Haggard character. Yeah, right on. Dude. Yeah, so I for Plus. my uh, oh, and my unique talent is my uncanny ability to redirect attention to something else. Hmm. Oh, nice. Yes. That's good. See, and uh, who else we got here? Uh, so I'm gonna use the Clarence B. Butterson, a uh, stunningly handsome Southern gentleman. With a drumstick bolero. You'll have to picture that in your head. It looks nice. <laughs> um, my background is I'm from an illustrious family in the Deep South. The scion of the Kentucky Fried Chicken Empire. Or at least I was. <gasps> yeah, there's something scary going on there. Uh, my unique talent is that I can take a sip of gravy to power myself up. <laughs> and I keep it on my person at all times. Fuck yeah. You're like the witcher with <laughs> gravy. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and your eyes turn brown. <laughs> More brown. More, more, <laughs> more brown. <laughs> All right. And uh, everyone, of course, is familiar with uh, Flint Steel, but why don't you just give us a little whatever's yes. written down there? Basically, I'm Flint Steel. I have a cold and rugged exterior, yet with a hint of grace and elegance. <laughs> I am a woman pretending to be a man. Uh, and also, I'm a crackshot gunslinger, and I can instantly bond with any horse. Instantly. Nice. nice. Expect me to whisper into the horse's ear. Ford. <laughs> Ford. Ford. I'm going to steal your fucking Ford horse, okay? Ford horse engine. Yeah. Ford cylinder. I don't like a horse. Ford horse. I like to drive a toot horse because it looks more like a sports. Sport yeah. horse? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sports horse. Yeah, toot horse better than Ford horse. Yeah. Yeah. They always say that. All right. So uh, we're going to say that this... Uh, this is after the kerfuffle that happened outside of the saloon where uh, wretched Regina uh, was murdered. Uh, she was the leader of the Viking crew, I believe. And uh, yeah, you managed to do like the old uh, junior high trick where you like crawled up behind her and pretended and uh, your friend pushed her and, and she hit her head a rock and she died. Wow. And uh, that's where we left out, left, left off last time. So we're going to say that like the crowd kind of like, wow, you Real tragedy. Wretched Regina, she was she was the best of us. And uh they all kind of did this this whole thing. They put the hats to their chest and like looked down. And uh one guy like kicks a uh little patch of dust and he's like, God damn. God damn. And then they all just kind of like put their hats back on and they uh wander back into nice, good job, guys. Mm -hmm. Wander back into the saloon. Flint Steel's just uh kind of like taking this all in and is a uh, Previous traveling companions had uh, one died of scruff, scruffulosis, like, and the other had uh, left because she had cured her ailments. But uh, two people seem to linger as uh, the crowd disperses, and it's you haven't described yourself physically, but me? Yeah. Oh, I'm haggard, and bewildered. Yeah, haggard, and bewildered. Yeah. yeah, so there's haggard, and bewildered, kind of and, dressed like this, and Buttersby, and you guys are just kind of like taking in the scene. You're all standing, uh, standing in the street right now. So yeah. this this is just after that fight that happened in the previous yes. story. So you're telling me that like immediately after the fight, like Tug McCollar just dropped dead. It was the sheer weight of being tripped upon that like killed Tug oh, McCollar. Man, he, so was he was getting truly, better too. That was truly so... an enfeebled orphan. <laughs> God damn, couldn't even handle getting tripped over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think he like took a shot of whiskey and almost died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I guess there were some ups and some downs there. Yeah, Kelly, really quick, you're wearing this uh, in the the game. 
uh, did you put this on before you got into your glory? <laughs> yes. <laughs> or did you find this just like laid about and swap clothes? Oh, oh, before I got into the DeLorean, right. Yeah. Uh, I, ooh, that's a good question. I like to think that uh, she she just kind of wears this because she was like, uh, you know, it's kind of like kooky and fun. Is she doing a bit at a family dinner? Uh, no, she's not the type to do bits at family dinner. She's more the type to cause drama at a family dinner. It's her, it was her ex-boyfriend's thing and she wears it out of like a form of spite no one really understands because no one there met her ex-boyfriend. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But she talked a lot about him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of that, like, oh, yeah, he was a real clown. Like, you thought this looked so cool. Well, yeah, I think it looks bad on me anyway. Oh, my God. Is it Aunt Jen? <laughs> Aunt Susan? Susan. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, did I not say my name? I'm Aunt Susan. <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> All right. God, she was so unhelpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. You can be Aunt Susan. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Changed my mind. She keeps, she's like traveled through dimensions yeah well it's in all these crazy situations she has a way of bumbling her way into situations yeah she's she's quacky yeah so uh, we're all kind of just hanging out near each other mm -hmm. uh yeah that's right yeah and you're i guess you more importantly are really trying to get your bearings uh of yeah what's going i feel on. like i'm i'm standing next to flint steel because i'm kind of figuring like there's just something about his energy that is just feels like very welcoming and like uh Does you know that, in, in, she's very intuitive yeah and Does that, like, and susan have a type <laughs> she, uh no like it's it's a very it's it's not like a romantic connection it's like uh, oh, yes. i feel safe i feel like i'm like it's my abandon my mounting abandonment complex it was just like i feel like i could just share my wardrobe with this person <laughs> yeah so oh i love your hat mister sorry what was your name the name's flint steel Sure. I'm a real man. <laughs> I'm a real man. <laughs> well, you you know what? I really appreciate you, Mr. Steele, because you are very manly, and yet somehow you have this aura that's very it it's uh, it contains aspects of the sacred feminine. I've been reading a lot about it. Oh shit, that might be an anachronism. I mean, you just got you got a great fashion sense. You got your feet in both worlds. I like it. That's my manly confidence. It lets me wear whatever I want and feel perfectly comfortable. I agree. I feel like we could share a wardrobe. Like we, I, I, I don't know. I don't have a measuring tape. Oh shit! Is that an acronym? Well, I, I don't have a <laughs> measuring uh, lasso, but I, I feel like we're almost the same size. Isn't that interesting? You're so manly. You're kind of my size. And uh, just as you guys are just like. Uh, talking about how manly and truly of a man uh, Flint Steele is. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dr. Beans and Buttersby are like, uh, uh, they like, you can see them in the distance walking towards and uh, Dr. Beans like kind of like laughs jovially and like, <laughs> and like slaps him on the back and he's like, well, as a, as a fellow man of business and entrepreneurship, I think you'll just fit in just fine in this town here. There's a lot of fine folk here looking for chicken is high up on their list of things to do. <laughs> oh, I love chicken. I'm glad they have chicken in the past. I mean, the present. I'm glad we have chicken in the present. I could eat a whole chicken because I'm so manly. Wow. I, I, well, as, uh, as a man who is uh, uh, just intrigued by the very nature of this proposition, I would like to see you do that right now. Would you happen to have any chicken on your person, Buttersby? Of the Buttersby Kentucky Fried Chicken Empire? Oh, of course, the Buttersbees. I've, everyone knows the Buttersbees living in this town, living in this period of time. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Who doesn't know the Buttersbees? Well, I started nervously drinking a beer. <laughs> Sorry, who is Dr. Beans? Quick aside. Oh, yes, Dr. Beans was uh, the first person that you met uh, on the, the wagon coming into this town. Um, or Flint Steele is familiar with Dr. Beans okay. of... Uh, the beans and bullets emporium gotcha yes and he's a he's kind of like a wealthy tycoon who's just just arrived to the town what kind of beans does he sell uh, well i'm glad that you asked <laughs> no one seems to really care about dr beans and the beans emporium uh beans and bullets is what we sell uh but oh, do people care more about the bullets than the beans they sure do the is well ever america never changes i suppose <laughs> america never heard of it <laughs> Wait, what time period? <laughs> I have no idea. That's for the listeners. It's yet to happen. 
Anyways, uh, but the beans, they, well, I think they're going to catch on. I've fried them in maple syrup. Mm. Fried beans. Fried beans in maple syrup. What a that concept. Sounds delicious. Yes. You can try some after you eat this entire chicken, which I am just <laughs> so excited to see. Do you have a chicken, Buttersby? Do you have a chicken? Well, my dear friend, first, if you would say my name correctly, it is Clarence B. Butterson. Oh, b- pardon me. Wow. Well, here, I have some money. <laughs> he just gives you some money. <laughs> Why, thank you. Where I come from, we love money. Anyways, ah. I want to get this uh, chicken industry oh, off so the ground. Oh, that's so I love money, too. Maybe we could <laughs> hang out and talk about money. Now, my goodness, who we... is this little seashell here? <laughs> <laughs> I do like the, like, you know, in, like, the Looney Tunes cartoons where they do, like, the awooga and, like, the eyes, like, pop out with hearts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, my goodness, Sugar Plum, when did you come into town? So you're saying that, okay, wait, what's your character's uh, name? Clarence B. Butterson. Butterson. So Butterson's type is haggard women? Yes. All right. I, I, guess I feel like you'd have to at a certain like time period. Yeah, he wants like it. like he's really into like you know like trailer park ant type thing. That's his type. Wow, he's a, he's really ahead of his time being Truly. into trailer park ants in like 1885. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe well, the, the spirit of that. Maybe you just like live above the local pharmacy and are addicted to like codeine cough syrup. <laughs> Yeah, you have yeah. that nice rasp to your voice. I feel voice. like that's one of the main things you did in 1885. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, like I go and I take uh, Kelly's hand like very delicately and just like get down on like one knee and give him a nice kiss on there. Whose hand? Sorry. Uh, you didn't say your name. Yeah, you didn't. I did. She asked Aunt you. Susan. She asked you. Oh, yeah. yeah. I grab Aunt Susan's, uh, you know, papered thin hand in mine. <laughs> <Paper>. <laughs> Dry. <laughs> uh, another feeble character for Kelly yes. to play. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm definitely... <laughs> Oh really? I'm good at resilience. Whatever. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm like. I'm in feeble but resilient. Yeah, and you're recently single. Yeah, that's Ooh, that's true. Yeah. I mean, Aunt Susan is kind of always recently single. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Spooky. Yeah. Actually, Aunt, Le- Aunt Susan is mostly not so much single in the recent past, but in the distant future. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because all of her relationships are now like chronologically ahead of her. Oh. Ah, yeah. Calendar that wise. Is true. Yeah. Sorry, what, okay, so you take my hand and do what? I, I just give you a nice a nice kiss on it, a gentlemanly kiss. Oh, what a gentleman. You never meet gentlemen where I come from, which which is uh, around here. No, it's one town over. You never meet gentlemen one town over. Well, my exotic little flower, I'm looking forward to meeting you more. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I get up and kind of dust myself off, but I'm I'm very interested in Aunt Susan. Yeah. Oh, oh. that much is clear. <laughs> I feel like, uh, oh man, I feel like I'm at risk of like sweating profusely already because like, I don't think I've ever been charmed like this. I don't think Aunt Susan's ever been approached like this. Sorry, Miss Susan. This odd accent of yours. You said a, a very confusing word earlier. I was wondering if you could tell me what it means. Well, yes, uh, what, I remember you what, saying what, something what strange that? as well. Anachronism. Yeah, yeah. Could you define that for me? Oh yeah, I had a friend. She was uh she was from the it was Czechos- she's from the uh Austro-Hungarian Empire and her uh, name was Anna. Everyone like smiles in uh, uh, fine <laughs> empire, yes. Very far away. Yeah, yeah, it's uh oh it's it sure is one of the empires that definitely won't turn into any uh Nazis. So okay. Um uh Anna Cronism, she was my uh she was my uh my friend from uh, Austria, or possibly Hungary, or possibly Czechoslovakia. <laughs> if any of those ring a bell for you, hmm. sir. Hmm. They do not. Okay, well, <laughs> you know what? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm forgetting. I'm, I'm, I was in the city for a bit. I'm forgetting my country manners. She was from, uh, she was from the old world. Hmm. So yeah. it's just a name. Yeah, and she and always talked crazy. about things that didn't quite make sense. So every time I... Every time I have a little oopsie, I forget what I'm talking about. I say, oh, that's an anachronism. <laughs> I kind of, yeah, I have a little laugh about it. I like to have a little laugh. You know, you have to. <laughs> you have to in this period of time. I mean, in a in a place like this, you know, there's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not. This is a town of murdering folk and bloodthirsty uh, gentlemen. Looking to prove themselves. So, 
Entertainment is at the bottom of the list of things that are... Oh, hey, what's that? Oh, I was hoping you'd finish your sentence. What does it say? <laughs> There's not sufficient disk space to continue recording. Okay, well, let's let's check where we've actually been recording to. <laughs> All right, well, everything's just still going. So where were we? You were in the middle of explaining something. Uh, yes. Beans. <laughs> oh, the type of beans. They're maple beans. Oh, you're trying to get me to eat a chicken. I would love to see that. <laughs> Do you have a chicken? Do, Do you... I have a chicken? What a question. A man who sells chickens who doesn't own chickens. Could you imagine? Okay, so I just, like, kind of opened my jacket and i have like a selection of chickens so you're like a watch salesman but yes with chickens. <laughs> i have like drumsticks on the top and then i have wings oh prepared then, like, chicken yeah like yeah. i don't actually have like the full you know they're they're already in pieces and Excuse ready to go me do you have a full chicken yes that was the conditions of the challenge yes. i believe an act of manliness that I'm, I'm sorry what what did you say a whole chicken not the chicken hole a whole <laughs> chicken <laughs> Ah, uh, my, my mistake, my mistake. Oh, the chicken hole, that's a bar I used to drink at. A Gross. bar? I what mean, a saloon. A oh, a saloon. Sorry, it's, I picked up a lot of that Austro-Hungary, uh, Austro-Hungarian terminology. Ah, yes, I can imagine the accent over the A now. Yeah. Bar. Bar. Yeah, bar. yeah it's, uh, it's Austrian for saloon. Ah, yes. L I've been to an Austrian Hungarian -Bar, saloon. L bar, they call it. Ah, yes. And Susan, I'm uh, I'm impressed by your worldliness. Well, hell, you know, I I have been known to travel, uh, much farther than you might imagine. I wonder if she travels in the bedroom, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Maybe she'll no, travel with two gentlemen simultaneously in the bedroom. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh. Now, now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. so, hey, what do you mean him and him? <laughs> well, sh yeah, well, <laughs> Dr. Beans doesn't <laughs> mind watching. Yeah, well, you know, I like to, I, I, I like a good rugged man, and, uh, you know, I don't mean buying watch, be, I don't mind being watched by, uh, you know, a sort of uh, strange, uppity, uh, Weasley man. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, you know. Be bean selling and bullet selling doesn't leave a lot of time for working out or any sorts of physical Clearly. activity. Uh, yeah, as you can tell by how slender I am. And he finally opens up his coat and he's like, maybe 90 pounds. <laughs> but he is six feet tall. So wow. Like, during <laughs> this right. like conversation, I've been kind of like rustling through like my bags and stuff. And like I, I pull out like a briefcase. It's the good stuff. Um, and I put my like my little coat in it and pop it. And when I open it, it's kind of like that, like, oh. Like, you know, like when you open like a chest and like the Zelda Dr. series Beans covers his eyes. Yeah. Like, you know, oh, sorry, it's when, bright in there. In my travels, here, I've always been amazed at what people can hold in the satchels. Like they hold really improbable amounts of like meat and bullets. It's crazy. <laughs> you never knew you could fit so much in a satchel. Wow. Beautiful, skins, beautiful you know? and observant. <laughs> we often get food poisoning and spend <laughs> days, <laughs> days on end, just unable to get out of our bed. <laughs> yes, we'd, wanna, have, we'd uh, have to all stay in bed together. Excuse me, Mr. Steele, could you run that one by me again? You shit and puke in your bed for days after eating the chicken that has been stored in the briefcase for days, weeks my, on end. My yes. lord, my lord, and with this knowledge, you're still gonna eat it. That's just how manly I am. <laughs> wow, I I am absolutely floored by this proposition. Let's do it. Okay, well, I've, I had the briefcase of chicken, and yeah. um, we're gonna roll for this chicken. Okay, yeah, all right. So, uh, do you have do you have any advantages or disadvantages of any kind? Mm -hmm. I'm good at. Wait, you're uh, not gonna tell him what to roll first? Are you just gonna like cherry pick his? No, these really matter. I'm oh. bad at strength and good at bravery. Like, what what would matter here? Do you think? I, I think like resilience. I don't have it. You don't have it. Are <laughs> you not bad at it though? No, right? nothing. All right, just a. Uh, Standard, I guess we don't have a bravery, dice intimidation, can, so. reaction, yeah, you good, intelligence, stealth, strength. All right, I mean, I'm, you can just hold your phone above the dice tray and. <laughs> oh, yes, that would be nice. All right, I'm going to roll for your uh, resilience okay. to endure this. Uh, it is quite hot out. This, this sweaty. Soup. At least it will be like more appropriate temperature while I'm eating it, you know? Yeah, it'll be like above room temperature. Oh, very nice. A 10. Uh, Yes, describe how you eat this chicken and and uh, 
So I, I dig in first. I basically like rip the wing off the side and I eat all the meat uh, and the cartilage and I actually like break the end off and start slurping the bone marrow out of all of the uh, oh, various bones of the chicken and just like with my bare hands start like like ripping like the breast meat off and like pull the carcass open and like pull the heart out of the chicken and eat that you go all the way damn so you you ate you ate the bones before the meat. <laughs> yeah, that's that that is that is badass as hell. Yeah, so yeah, you managed to like scarf down this chicken in a very unconventional way, and Doctor Beans is just like, he, you know, you saved him a seat, but he only needed the edge. <laughs> he's he's just he's just in it, and he's like, wow, Ten. wow, <laughs> but he starts taking notes. He's like, jeez, I've eaten the bones first. That's smart. Mighty on what? Sure, he's just floored. Sure, 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 sure. Every time you do something, sure. And Susan's like figuring this is like a colloquialism has a pickup. She's like, oh, sure, 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 you know, sure, like, kind of blend, yeah. sure. Yeah, they're all sure at each other. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, yes, and you, you, as you finish your like last bite, and it is finger licking good. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you kind of feel like. You know, you should have gotten food poisoned, but you you feel like more energetic and powerful than you ever have in your your young male adult life. My That's young the male spices. female adult, adult life. life. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, great. Yeah, and uh, actually, well, that uh, simply was delicious. Why? Well, I expected it to be, and I, I close it. I'm, I'm honestly kind of like I'm a little bit horrified by like how we <laughs> ate it. I just kind of am like dabbing my face with a napkin, like oh goodness. <laughs> Is it a handkerchief? Yes, a white mm. handkerchief. <laughs> Is it like kind of discolored and yellow and gross? At this point now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yes, absolutely. <laughs> Great. Susan tries to dab her face with a napkin, but she gets confused getting you know blending in with cowboys. By the time she tried to blend in with like her nieces and nephews, and grabs a napkin and starts doing this. She's just dabbing, just start dabbing, dabbing yeah. her face with the napkin. And there's another mm. thing that won't scan at all if you're just listening to this. But <laughs> and uh, yeah, and there's a there's a you're do, you're doing this all in the, the the street right now. And there's a there was a guy. Uh, he's got like a, a like a classic sheriff's mustache, like mm. the thick thick kind of like curled one, like and a young Stalin mustache, a like young Stalin, like mustache. a Tomas mustache. Yeah, and he was uh, he was on a. That's rocket. the reference point that I think uh, casual listeners will help. Or will enjoy like yes is the Tomas mustache yeah the, this character looks like Tomas for everyone who's yeah. listening um yeah and he was on his rocking chair and uh, he was uh, he was uh, ch- uh chewing on some tobacco and uh he's like hey you and he just looks directly at Flint Steele yes you think you're some sort of tough guy eating a chicken backwards and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes, I think I am the toughest guy in this town. Well, really? <laughs> and he, like, he, like, lurches forward as the, the rocking chair creaks, and he reveals his full height of five foot six. <laughs> 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 and he, he pulls up his belt, and he walls towards you, and he's like, well, I reckon I'm the tough, toughest guy in this street right now, and if you eating chickens backwards and shit, I take that as a direct challenge to my honor. What are you going to do about it? What am I gonna do about it? <laughs> and uh, yeah, he just pulls out a knife. He's like, "I'm gonna cut you like a fish." <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, wow, everyone's so my masculine gun. back in this time. I pull out my gun and point it at him. <laughs> do you have a gun? Is he, is he, is yeah, he like? Yeah, yeah. Is he lunging yeah. at me? Uh, no, he was just like kind of like standing beneath you, threatening, threatening you with this knife. I'm like a sharpshooter. Yeah, you, he has a gun. I have a gun. Yeah, sure, I'm yeah. a gunslinger. Yeah. yeah that, It'd be weird I hold it like this, of course. Well, looks like you brought a gun to a knife fight, <laughs> sir. Or maybe I brought a knife to a gunfight. Who's to say? I should make that into a saying of some sort. Less half full or half empty, basically. <laughs> yeah. Aunt Susan is just quietly internally realizing that she could invent all kinds of like sayings and slogans, like <laughs> finger looking good and yeah. bringing a knife to a gunfight. People fight. would be like, wow, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, just like a really low stakes uh, biff, like instead of winning all the money in the world, it's like, I'm just going to coin some phrases. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm, this is like you're you're like uh, trying to intimidate him. Yep. Yeah. Are, are you good at that? Yep. I've, I'm good at oh, intimidation. Oh, fuck yeah. Right. Oh, 
pretty pretty good pretty good um he definitely like he was he was walking thank you he was walking towards you with this knife he's like and he kind of like he takes a little a quick second and he's like what and he's like and he looks around and like uh one of his friends on a, another rocking chair beside him and he like kind of looks at him and he raises an eyebrow he's like kind of like <laughs> judging his friend he's like well yeah well mm. I mean, uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't be fair to shoot an unarmed man, now would it? It wouldn't, but you have to tell me that I am tougher than you. I will you absolutely leave. never do that. I'm, I'll okay, be then, right back. Then get would, on out of here, I'm you a, idiot! I'm, I'll be back, damn it! <laughs> and he like stomps his like little uh, size eight feet <laughs> along the along the dirt path. You've kind of like disarmed him from now, but he, he he did say he was coming back. I look on past this well below average man walking <laughs> off into the distance. Yeah, it looks kind of funny. He's making a real huff about it. <laughs> so he's just Yosemite Sam. Yeah, he's basically Yosemite Sam. Yeah. <laughs> he goes down the street shooting his guns into the air. He's so mad. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, you kind of like managed to disarm disarm this man, but he did say he's coming. It's coming back. Oh, dear, it's coming back. Oh, no, I've had... Listen, okay, everybody calm down. I've had a lot of exes tell me the same thing. So what we need to do is... Uh, and, and Susan quickly realizes that all of her coping strategies are, like, extremely modern. Like, like live streaming Breathe. her ring doorbell and, like, consistently, <laughs> like, tagging the police on Twitter. And... <laughs> um, God, what else would like I just hashtag the police? <laughs> <laughs> just, just like she's just like Ed, Ed Susan, like the worst they sting for is anyone like so around tired. Day, Ed Susan got a Twitter account, <laughs> and she's just like every time there's like a person that she considers to be threatening to rob her house, which is like anyone who looks young or poor or not white walking by her front, she's just like like posts a picture and puts it on Twitter and tags like at FBI. So. <laughs> So she's realizing, I think, that uh, none of her her skills are useful here in the Old West. And yeah. it's like, oh, we have to, uh, oh, no, oh, shit, I gotta get the, get, and she grabs a, a, a wine bottle, or no, a whiskey bottle, obviously, and just smashes it on the bar, like, just like a primal instinct kicks in. Oh, whoa, whoa. Fasty one, huh? Ain't she? <laughs> and he looks over at, um, but, butters, butters more. But, 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 but more, but, but more, Butterson, Jesus Butterson, sorry. Christ, is that fasty little critter, ain't she? That she is, that, that she is. is. Wait, so we're, we're in the bar Butterson. then? We're, the bar was uh, where the no, whole fight happened? Or? The street still, but yeah, there'd just still. be a whiskey bottle on the ground, why not? Yeah, I'm, all right, check yeah, People are all yeah. alcoholics in the yeah. Old West. Yeah. yeah, there's just empties everywhere. They don't have a recycling program. They, they sure don't. No. <laughs> Hope those haven't been invented yet to clean that up. So what are we what are we doing <laughs> in this incredible. town? What are we trying to <laughs> Sorry? What are we doing in this town? What are we? Yeah, well, um uh Flint Flint uh tough time to remember ever. Flint Steel? Flint Steel. Do you want a pen and write some things down? Yeah, no, I'm just fucking free balling it. You have um, a notebook like I, this I is it's very on. useful for and this is your pen, I think. It is. Yeah. Thank you. Um yeah, like Flint Steel is aware of like there's some sort of like uh magic to be earned in this town by like doing manly things and um i've been he, very manly up got, until this got, point he's got a he's got he got a little bit of, a little taste of it um when uh he ate that entire chicken backwards and and then disarmed this uh this this man who was like assaulting him you feel you're you're one inch taller like literally one inch taller. We're literally one inch taller uh i don't know how tall i was before but you're plus one of that now okay yeah Okay, well, like, Cl Clarence is, like, really into trying to uh, impress Aunt Susan, so he's yeah, just, I like... Yeah, it was, like, some some manliness of seducing a woman. Yeah, I, th yeah. I think so, especially Being a sex she pest said. is a classic manly act. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A Pepe Le Pew type character. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> uh, Doc Dr. Beans, what what is there to do in this here uh, town? Maybe we could get up to some uh, little bit of fun activities altogether? Well, I'm thinking of a fun activity that I could get involved with right now, but let me <laughs> let me forebode my, my baser instincts and perhaps give you a little tour of this town. Uh, there's, sure. Sure. Uh, there's there's much to do. Um, not in the ways of entertainment, but there's a there's a there's a gun range where people be shooting bottles and cans of beans and stuff. Yes. Of course, provided by Beans and Bullets Emporium. Of course. Of course. 
Um, there's the, there's the, 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 uh, ho the horse, the horse racing area horse. where people like to horse, horse around and race. <laughs> That's a manly thing to do. And, uh, of course there's the <laughs> saloon where people get drunk. Well, that is three amazing choices, but I think we should leave it up to this little lady here. Oh. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I've, I've watched some, mo oh shit, wait, I, I've watched some plays, no, wait, do you have, mo never mind, I've, I've, I've watched some performances by some actors, and, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, the part where you break the bottle is the only part I know, I don't really, I don't really know how, how to wield it, so I guess I, I'm gonna be honest with you, I think we should get out of here before anybody comes back. Well, sure, of course, uh, a woman of such fine and delicate features wouldn't be suited to a life of violence. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, presumably the, uh, the buff of acting manly kind of works inversely, voicely on me. <laughs> so I would assume that I have to be more, well, either more feminine or more cowardly if I want to, uh, obtain the magical powers. Is that right, uh, Dr. Beans? Well, I don't know if becoming more feminine is even possible for such a sunshiny, glittering diamond like yourself, but I suppose- Oh, I'm wilting like a flower! Wilting, <laughs> <laughs> wilting. Oh, I'm rotten like a fish. Uh, I'm dying, your I'm flower dying. is killing me. It's <laughs> killing me. Well, sure, I reckon that something like that could be possible. You could get a permanent debuff by being a coward. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good to know. I'll make a note of that. I don't have a pen, but you know. Well, here, little lady, and he he, uh, <laughs> he pulls a pen from uh, his pocket. And... Oh, we have pens in this time. Excellent. Yeah. That's right. So, America is not yet to become, but we do have pens. <laughs> If I, have I taken my DeLorean back into, like, an alternate timeline? <laughs> oh, yes. yes oh, shit, yes. okay. It's gonna be really tough for Aunt Susan. Yeah. She's actually really well-read in history. She's just been so thrown <laughs> off by the anachronism. She's like, oh, shit. <laughs> and I read just, I was right. Just before you guys can decide a... what to do, you hear, uh, hear from the distance, like, the, the town bell, it strikes, strikes noon, hmm. and an ominous bell kind of echoes out, and you hear in the distance, Hey, you! Is it high noon? It is high noon. Uh-oh. <laughs> So wow, all wow, these people wow. were like, you're trying to be like, extra man mutilating yeah. themselves, <laughs> getting into fights, like slugging whiskey, like everything that's happened so far was this, all like 11, 10 a.m. This a. is Red Dead Redemption. People wake up and start drinking and <laughs> yeah. start fighting. It's just how it works. And uh, yeah, you you kind of turn around and you see this uh, a very small shadow cr oh, creeping no. towards you. <laughs> <laughs> Five foot nothing shadow. Oh, he's even smaller now. Yeah, yeah, he lost an inch. Oh, he's five foot five. He lost you, six you, inches. You stole his inches. Okay, great. Yeah. I'm looking for the man what stole my inches. <laughs> I reckon you can't shorten me much more <laughs> without me withered away to nothing. So it's something to die for. You ready to draw, you bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to draw, you small, withering, coward dwarf of a man. Oh. Yeah, call him a coward. Great one. Yeah, roll intimidation again, because that's what you're doing. Yeah. And, you, and, like, you're not even making eye contact with him. You're just looking at his shadow, and you could see it, like, kind of, like, creep towards him. <laughs> and, you, and you feel a little bit even taller. And he's like... Look here, I'm not about to just wither away and die like a coward. I either gotta fight you now or just turn into literally nothing. Okay, and, how, uh, how does a duel work in the old west? Oh, in this uh in this timeline? Yeah. In this timeline. <laughs> in this timeline. Well, I will uh prepare you for the duel. Now, of course everyone knows that the duel has to be declared by a beautiful woman. A beautiful woman has to stand upon this podium. And oh shucks, we'll have to find a beautiful woman. Hey, is that beautiful woman? <laughs> oh my, she is so modest. Modest indeed. Another flattering feature of Aunt Susan, the most beautiful woman I in find our it presence tiresome. right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me shoot this fucking short idiot. <laughs> oh, he's like, hard to get. I find him the most appealing. Oh, 
damn. <laughs> that, 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 that's what she says in her internal monologue. <laughs> oh, okay, which sounds exactly like her own voice. Yeah, well, I know. <laughs> yeah. Wait, well, I mean, the conventions of the duel could be, uh, they, they must be a bit bitten by. Aunt Susan, would you please do the honor, stand on this podium and, and, uh, and uh, take this shot of whiskey to <laughs> begin the duel? Oh, you mean me? Oh, I'm swooning so hard. She's swooning so hard. <laughs> She's really man, yeah. Oh, of course. And she kind of like, uh, man, I don't know. What, what what would she do on the way to the podium to kind of like be be hotter? Yeah, is like, she like, like fanning I, herself with her hand, like in the way that a paunchy dude might like cover up his paunch with a pillow and like press really hard on the pillow to like, you know, make his arms look bigger. What am I doing to kind of like tart myself up? <sighs> I think Susan. she she kind of probably just be like you know like pulling up her little leggings and like you know I guess you dusting off her Skechers kind of thing like just She'll you like know fluff her hair out you know like the, oh yeah 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 she might be wearing Skechers honestly it's, <laughs> not, it's not impossible she's wearing like a big like old timey gown but as soon as she kind of like bustles it up it's like oh shit I'm wearing Skechers I can't do this <laughs> and then so she just kind of like. She just kind of just pushes up on her tits. She doesn't know what else. To do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like hey, that, yeah, boys? Oh, I bet you've never <laughs> conceived of these before. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Dr. Beans is going to resist Char- getting an erection. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and it is clear as the day that, <laughs> as uh, it's clear as the sun is today at high noon that Dr. He, Beans is fully gored. He, he, he got a four? Noon. I got a four. That's very <laughs> coincidental because Dr. Beans, he's, he's rocking a four. <laughs> he's rocking That's a four. Heard. All, all, heroic, all four heroic inches of my member are Jeez. fully engorged. <laughs> he just announces that. <laughs> yeah, he just says it out, but not to anyone in particular. Like He just says it to himself. Oh, to the roof. I feel like I've really found the place where I belong. Everyone <laughs> is just speaking the truth. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Aunt Susan, roll... Uh, resilience to take the shot of whiskey okay and start the duel i like how the dice tray is nowhere near any of the players yes it's perfect well. yeah good throw yeah no no yeah that's uh, and susan you 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 don't are you mm. a drinker aunt susan <laughs> I'm, trying to, <clears throat> I'm trying to remember because originally aunt susan was a mormon oh yeah okay so and not experienced in the yeah, well, then, but she was really, but she also was really into the Vicodin. Okay. Um, so, like, so maybe, I'm, I'm trying to think of how I square that. I guess she was just sort of like. She was breaking her tradition. Well, it's like one of those people who thinks that like, you know, like like the poophole loophole Catholics. Oh, like pharmacy drugs are f- good. Right. They're good yeah, for it's you. like codeine. If, if the drug didn't exist when uh, their prophet Joseph Smith was around. Um, then it can't be like prohibited by God because you know it's Plus not. It's legal. It's not it's in legal. The, if it's not in the Book of Mormon, then Susan is very law abiding. Yeah. yeah, you can drink Diet Pepsi and eat Vicodins as a Mormon. I eat Vicodins, not yeah, have Vicodin or a Vicodin. No. But yeah, Vicodin. I feel like all they. Like I mean, bears. this is like this is this is kind of peak Mormon time. So she's probably Canon- try- canonically in this universe. Yes. Yeah, well, and she's probably going to try to downplay that. So I don't know. Maybe she's going, maybe she's going to try her first drink of alcohol. Because really, you are about to vomit. I feel like I'm. <laughs> oh, right. Because I'm on the verge. Yeah. Oh, no. You are. Yeah. You're going to vomit now. All right. Here's what I want to do. Yeah. Because I'm trying to blend in. I may or may not be a Mormon. I feel like I'm going to eat shit later when I realize in some other episode I said Aunt Susan was like something else. Uh, but I, th- I think what Nancy is going to try to do is like take a sh- get a shot and like stand near the plant and kind of try to pull a return to Zork where sh- she's like, oh yeah, like let's yeah, she's going to do a toast and then she's going to try to pour it into the plant, uh, and like pretend like she did a shot. Oh no, you've 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 already taken the shot. You rolled resilience to not vomit, so you are. I'm just giving you an opportunity to like vomit somewhere or do something sneaky, maybe to you know keep these uh these two. These two rich, rich men from, you know, maybe not being so attractive to you. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm going to go try to vomit demurely in the plant. <laughs> Demir- what does that sound <laughs> like? <laughs> Blah. <laughs> Blah. 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 Comes out as like one blob. <laughs> just one big blob of vomit. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Even when she vomits, she's just radiant. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's, what, that's what I rolled for was I already took the shot? Yeah. 
man, I gotta I gotta get back on my meds or something because it's just all <laughs> over the place. All right, but that that did signal the 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 time of the duel, and you both draw your arms and draw draw. And do you want to do anything like cool or sneaky? Or? And I I stand here with I'm my like pull it quill out or pen and paper, drawing their arms because I think that's manly. <laughs> nice. They're I'm a gunslinger, you know. Like, do we have to take like three steps away from each other, turn around and draw, or are we just like looking? She at just each took other? a shot, and like you guys are staring at each other. Okay, I'm just, just gonna like draw. just straight up, just straight wow. up, Shoot classic from the hip. execution. Classic. Shoot. As efficient as possible. Yeah, and you do you do a good job. And <laughs> he like he he goes to draw, but like because he had lost so much size, he like goes to draw and his like pants <laughs> just like it. fall down. And uh, he's like he's miss he's like, Oh my proportions are different and bang, he gets it right 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 in the dome. You just oh, dome, wow. domeless man and he falls to the, the ground and he's he's dead. And uh yeah, people you've kind of like drawn a crowd at this point and they're like that was one of the that was one of the tougher ones. This this guy right here, and you're d- definitely still taller. You're like, I'm like five foot nine now. Yeah, yeah, yeah at least, at least. And, I uh, feel like Aunt Susan, who has never actually been exposed to physical violence, only like the hypothetical violence she experiences from the like teenagers and poor people's and minorities walking past her house. She's watched like CSI Miami or something. I feel like it's different when you see it for real. Yeah, and absolutely. I feel like she's starting to panic, and. Like so, no one noticed her vomit in the plant. They were saying, "Oh no, no, uh, they, they were noticed, turned they liked, on by they it. liked it." Oh, okay, yeah, because um, you did it demurely, <laughs> right? I I just think that I I she feels really freaked out and wants to get the fuck out because someone's just been murdered. She's yeah. like, "Oh, it was oh. consensual murder." She, at yeah, least. well, but like, you know, when you just kind of go into like fight or flight mode and like yep. you're you're not using your frontal cortex anymore so that's she's probably just like, how I she's yelling feel. out loud yeah, like at fbi at fbi <laughs> <laughs> and uh she's she just wants to run out the door like this is not a good scene for her oh god oh god does somebody i, I gotta fi- i gotta fix the delorean i gotta go why well, should want the farrier and buckle inspector <laughs> <laughs> Dad, Susan, this is no time for horsing around and inspecting buckles. A man's died. We have to we have to respect a consensual duel. So charmed suddenly by this man's uh gravitas and uh his composure in the moment, Aunt Susan goes, Oh yes, that's right. DeLorean, the farrier and the other thing. The what was it? Inspector. And and Dr. Beans is is so into Aunt Susan, he's like, that that's rad. <laughs> he just he just plays it off. He's like Right, the the DeLorean, the farrier and buckle inspector. Yeah, he's a good friend of mine. Oh, I was just doing a oh maybe we don't have bits. I was just doing a horse around. Yeah, let's ah, yes, uh, let's do exactly what you were saying, which is uh, you know, the correct funeral rites. Okay, so Clarence has been kind of like watching all of this and he's like getting quite worried now because like he he really wants to attract Aunt Susan, of course. And now he's like, uh, you yeah, know, Dr. He's, Beans is really I don't, hustling on. You know, like I'm kind of falling behind here. So I'm trying yeah, to think Dr. Of what Beans to do. is climbing her list of fuckable fascists. Yeah. Like. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I am one. <laughs> so I, I like, I take my little, like, uh, what, what do you call those things? The thing that you can take a little sip from. A little flask. S- flask. Yes, that yeah. thing. I take a little flask of my gravy and have like a quick sip of this sip stuff. Of a lot yeah. of things. That's where you get a yeah. boost from drinking Get a little gravy. power up to give myself a little bit of sink here. Yeah, okay, you're going to get advantage on the next thing that you do. Good. All right. Um, My gentle Aunt Susan, let me tell you one of the most manliest things we could do in this town. The manliest thing we could do is bet on a goddamn horse race. <laughs> <laughs> Do you seek yourself as a betting man, Dr. Beans? I, don't, I reckon I didn't get this successful by not taking risks, so I am a man of wages and gambling and sorts and drinking and spitting and sorts. How many inches would you bet? I would bet all four. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, that, I'm, this will, this I'm will. just a simple country girl. What exactly does that mean? How does oh, that manifest? We are well in this town. You can wager the length of your peepee, <laughs> your peepee, your peepee, the, the the length of your member in a sure. What's oh. it, what exactly is at stake here? Do, you know, what happens if you win? What happens if you lose? Well, I I have, as you can probably guess, won a couple, a couple of these competitions already. I sure. stand. At a, a sturdy four inches, but are you I sure would, you weren't previously five? 
uh, well, uh, it, it, it comes and goes, you know. <laughs> Dick length, it comes and goes. You lose you know, some. It, you, it's you what some. they say. It's not the number of inches. It's the sturdiness of each inch that counts. That's right. And each one is just magnificent. I, I'm i willing to wager all four. All four? Well, should sure. we, should we, Do you like... need some time to get some more inches before we wager? I was going to say, should we? Because should, you have yours as four, so like, should, should we roll oh, for dick length? Oh, everyone should roll for dick length. Okay. Yeah. What am I rolling Well, I mean, for? I guess that's just... Not you, Ants. Well, I mean... I got, <laughs> dick. I got a proverbial dick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could win one. You got a you metaphysical want. penis. Yeah. You could roll for the metaphysical penis, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, big people. Everyone energy. roll for I their... Roll for big, everyone size. thinks right. my roll dick is. Roll for tits and cocks. You got it. Oh, so wow. I got a ten. What is the like huge? Is that his dick? What is the equivalent of a ten-inch dick? She got of... massive mommy milkers. Oh, She's yeah. like oh, huge yeah. bazonka yeah. That's the one thing really Aunt Susan definitely has going for her. Okay. Am I rolling two? Yeah, roll two dice. That's why Aunt Susan was like, I know no one's gonna have conceived and, of yeah, these so because got she's she's got implants. Yeah. They're like brand new implants too, like. They happen canonically after every other oh, appearance that, of her. That's so probably far. why she was wearing the boyfriend's outfit and just trying to look. Yes. You know, she's like, yeah. yeah he she could like fill it out. I look like that. Oh yeah. You want to roll for your PP? What about you? Oh, I've already, I've already established. I have a four-inch hog. You're gonna make him stand up like that? You're not gonna roll for him? Metaphysical so ten. Amazing. Great. You can, you can dispose that at your, however you see fit. Hmm. Everyone thinks my dick is nine inches you, long. Yes. You give off that energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. So he's like kind of laughing. He's like, well, if you need to muster up some more inches before we wager, then I would understand. I laugh. Well, I'm, I kind of laugh. I'm like, well, I've got four to spare, but I'm going to put down eight. <gasps> <laughs> Twing! <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, I'm going to roll for how fucking sick that is. Oh, it was super sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you definitely you 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 gain another inch. Yes. <laughs> Very manly. Uh Dr. Beans is like, well, 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 I suppose uh I can I have no more inches to wager if you could possibly <laughs> imagine such a situation, but I'd be willing to wager, perhaps. And Susan is not good at flirting, but she reaches over and she grabs Dr. Beans by the hand and is like, You can wager mine. She she does not understand what the inches is about. She's okay. completely missed out on this innuendo. <laughs> he like he like looks at you. He's like, but she's trying well, to blend in. She's like, well, everyone's his betting inches, so I guess I should kind of just bet my inches and see how that plays out. Maybe yeah. we just won't lose and it'll be fine. And he stares longingly at Aunt Susan, but he 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 feels good about this race coming up. He's like, well, well, I will not mince words about it. We both have a keen interest in Aunt Susan, and uh, I would be willing to, uh. Bow my head out of this, uh, this love triangle that is developed. How does that sound to you? Four inches, and I will stop hitting on Aunt Susan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right on. Yeah, so you guys like stroll over to the horse races, unless someone doesn't want to do that. But keeping the group together is nice. I'm a horse whisperer, so like, oh, I'll go yeah, you horse. are. Oh fuck. Damn. I'm gonna try and fucking fix a horse fix. race. Oh yeah, oh, that's, shit. that's manly. That's me. fixing a horse <laughs> race. Absolutely. Yeah, cool. You know what? My my daddy fixed horse races, and my daddy's daddy fixed horse races. So <laughs> that's that's my model for masculinity. So this is internal. This is I'm gonna flip to internal monologue More again. Internal. You can't have my beer. Oh, <laughs> here, here, that. here, drink my beer. Here, drink this. So suddenly in my internal monologue is, you know, maybe this uh this uh Flint Steel character, maybe maybe this is the person to uh be my protector, or whatever it is I want while I'm here. <laughs> Who knows? I'm, I'm not just sure going by what the seat I want. I'm still very disoriented and haggard. All right. We're gonna, we're gonna make up some horse names real quick here. <laughs> we're gonna get some uh we're gonna get Clippity Cloppity. <laughs> A clippity cloppity. Oh yeah, isn't that canonically you have a clippity cloppity? Uh, no. I think one of the characters did. Something stupid but... like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you could do that. Like a what was it? Like the verb and noun. That's exactly the, what we're going to do. Not verb and noun. Noun and adjective. All right. So. Uh, oh, you're gonna get us to generate your. Horse yes, name. we're gonna generate some horse. Oh shit! Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Sorry. Right. So. Name, clip clop. Uh, there. You know what? I just like that clip clop is on there. Um. <laughs> all right. So Sam, could you please think of a verb? 
Or and, do you mean uh, one adjective and noun, I think? Oh, yeah. uh, wait, was it? Yeah, adjective. No, we're going to do verb, actually. Oh. Yeah. I mean, you're, All the, right. you're like, the game master. Yeah. You can do it however you All want. Right. A verb, verb. Think of a verb. Got one. Don't say it. And Kelly, think of a noun. Uh, okay. Um, a noun that would people would probably know in this time period, right? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> sure, uh, but, or not. Whatever. It's a different timeline. Well, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it close to the something. Okay. Uh, I got a got noun. It. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Sam? Pounding? Cactus. Pounding cactus is one of the worst <laughs> names. Lovely. All right. Let's do that again. Uh, Kelly, verb, and Adam, noun. Tell me when you got it. Does, is it a gerund? Is it like an ing verb? Or? Uh, I think it would make sense to do an ing, ing noun All right. or a verb. Um, Don't say it when you got it. Just hold on to it. Hold it in your mouth. Yes, wash it around in your mouth a bit. Get the flavors of it. Do you want it? Yes. All right, I got one. All right. Sure. Sure. All right. Twirling. Boathouse. <laughs> <laughs> Twirling boathouse. All right, and uh, verb and noun. One more horse. Um. Okay. And a verb ending in ing. Stomping. Gravy. <laughs> Stomping gravy. Nice. I know who I'm then. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, so you roll up to the, the horse races and there's a there's a guy kind of like taking wagers. There's a bunch of guys like throwing cash at him. You're like, oh yeah, 22 on Clip Clop. All right, that's right. And the third 13 on Pounding Cactus. Twirling Boathouse is a show of a uh, fine steed. Oh, we got 50 over here. And he's, uh, he's just like taking, taking bets from everyone. And uh, yeah, so these are your options for your, your horses to bet on. Clip Clop, Pounding Cactus, Twirling Boathouse, and Stopping Gravy. I walk up confidently immediately and put eight inches on stomping gravy. Wow, eight inches. Eight inches on stomping gravy. <laughs> this is turning out to be an exciting <laughs> horse race, folks. Stay so tuned. So that's not a personal bet. That's like a bet you make at the horse, like, betting station. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. the only thing you bet in this, like, yeah. the manly business. No, it has to be our... all done through, Indian like, a uh, uh, legitimate uh, <laughs> business here. It's not a personal wager. Everyone will know exactly what's going <laughs> Who on. Who did you not bet on? Personal uh, business. The gravy one. Stomping okay, gravy. Stomping gravy. gravy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Beans walks up and he's like, eight inches on stomping gravy. Wow. I didn't know you're that much of a wagering man. I'm obviously going on clip clop because that's the sound horses make. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to pull Flint Steel aside and be like, I'm going to whisper really, you know, like quietly. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Steel! Wait, Mr. Steel! Everyone Mr. can hear it. Mr. Steel! What Which do you want? one are you? And I, do I notice that people are like turning to look at me? Do I? Like, uh, uh, I'm gonna roll for uh, perception. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. What am I? I'm good at perception. Roll me both. Oh yeah, you're ten. You're fine. All right. So I, I decide to, I really, people can hear me. So I just kind of cut my hands on his ear. Well, okay. Um, Mr. Steel, which horse are you? And I look around. Going to whisper to, to fix the race. I don't really see how that's any of your business. Oh, I thought we were oh. friends. I thought we were a team. I thought you were going to be the one to rail me behind the saloon in my sundress. <laughs> <laughs> Is she wearing a sundress? Uh, I think you said. I feel like I'm wearing the old West equivalent of a sundress, which is those giant like uh, fucking frocks that touch great. the ground yeah, yeah. Um, and cover up my, uh, my sketchers. I tell her. If you really must know, I'm gonna, I'm going to bet five inches on pounding cactus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. And, uh, and are you doing that? Are you wagering? Yeah, I go up to the stall and I say, now, five I don't have any inches, so I'm gonna cactus. be really bold, and uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stride up to the. Hmm. The like it's, it's probably like a ticket taker, right? Some kind of person. Uh, yeah, he's like he's. He, I'm gonna say he's like a somehow like a magical man who like he like he can take inches and give inches, <laughs> right? Like, but I don't have inches to give, so here's what I'm gonna do. Or I, I don't. If I do, I don't know how your system works. But Aunt Susan doesn't believe she has inches to give, 
Because oh. she's a, she's a very much like a rational materialist in terms of inches. She doesn't really like conceive of metaphysical inches. Right. So she's like, I, I got not an inch to spare, but I do. This is internal monologue again. Okay. I do have a time traveling DeLorean, <laughs> which, you know what? I'm kind of happy here. Maybe one of these unhappy people can uh, send themselves to the future or the past or whatever. And so what she's going to do is so she's, she's going to sidle up to the... The, the bookie, the person yeah, taking it's back. just like, dicks and inches, right here, by dicks himself. And, inches. <laughs> and she'll, she'll, she's going to like flutter her really crusty eyelashes at him. Yeah, some dust kind of gets on. <laughs> yeah, and like kind of beckon him in closer. And she's going to say like, you there, you, uh, you take alternative bets? Uh, I deal mostly in inches, but what were you thinking, babe? Well... I'm feeling pretty confident in my bet. And uh, would you pay out anything else money? No, I take inches. I'll take inches. It's fine. Yeah, uh, but how many inches is this worth to you? And I put the keys to the DeLorean on the counter. And obviously he won't know what they are, but yeah. I'll say, what if I told you I had a carriage that was horseless? <laughs> he like shudders. He's like, you've, you've rattled him his... When he's like, what, what? And then he thinks about it, he's like, well, then I have to buy horses. <laughs> <laughs> what if I told you the horses were inside you in a sense? Jesus Christ. <laughs> in a sense. Horses have a lot of inches. Yeah, that's right. Look, ma'am, I think uh, you're talking crazy talk to me. You're not making a lick of sense. Well, what if I offered this as a horse inside me in a carriage with no horses? <laughs> then I get the horses out of me and into the carriage. What's the what's the deal with that? Sure. <laughs> I want you to imagine you've got a carriage that will take you faster than any carriage would take you. All right, I'm doing it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you're taking the bet. It's fantastic. Oh, I no, was going no, to show it. you these as collateral, but I guess I won't. Never no, I'm mind. just imagining a carriage going really fast. Yeah. Yeah, and you won't have to feed it carrots. Or whatever you feed horses. What the fuck are you talking about, lady? <laughs> <laughs> he has no idea what you're talking about. You're talking about, like, horses inside of him and, like, <laughs> and, like a carriage that can go fast, but he's, like, it doesn't make a lick of sense to him. Well... Look, are you taking the bet or not? You're not. I'm not. A, no, and then I no. remember the currency of this town. I go, oh, you're not some kind of a non-manly man, are you? No, I'm the manliest man around. I can get dicks and, and distribute them how I see fit. <laughs> you wouldn't want to get. But I do it you honorably wanna, you through gambling. Wanna, you wouldn't want to be emasculated by a woman with no dick at all. Uh, of course, a woman with a dick. Could you even imagine? Yeah, and the largest tits you've ever seen. You wouldn't want to get emasculated by these. And I rip my uh, shirt open and I kind of show her. I show him my uh, my tits, which are implants. So like they're just unlike anything he's ever seen. Holy moly, those are gigantic. <laughs> and this boy where that came from. And I, you know, close up. You, you have more. Well, you where are, are they? You're asking a lot of questions for the man who's not taking my bet. I'll take a bet if I get to squeeze your boobs. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> sure. Sure. All right. I let him have like one honk. One honk? One honk will get you two inches. <laughs> <laughs> what's the what's the payout? What's the payout in inches on this? Which horse am I betting on again? Which, which I don't know. We haven't gotten that far. <laughs> what? Pounding cactus. Pounding cactus. Thank you, Mr. Fucking uh <laughs> Flint Steel. Oh, you haven't asked my Mr. name. Mr. Flint Steel. I don't give a shit about your name, you peon. I take my <laughs> damn bet. All right. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm having a I've been having a really weird day. You seem very nice. Um No, no, I'm a pervert. <laughs> <laughs> I well, steal and I steal and redistribute dicks and I want to squeeze your tits. <laughs> and I also I, I run a gambling ring. There's nothing great about me. Sure, those are the three most perverted things you can do. Oh, you don't even know the half of it. Okay, so uh, uh, is our uh, is our bet finalized? Yeah, sure, sure. Tuts. How okay. many honks are you willing to wager? I'm willing to wager. Okay, you're saying one honk it's for two, two inches? inches? Yes. How many inches am I going to need to like 
I don't know, put a down payment on it, a nice farmstead, homestead, whatever. Ah, oh, well, uh, I reckon 10 inches will get you started. What's the, what's the odds on, I asked you what the odds are on the cactus horse. What, the odds? The odds are, uh, pound, pound and cactus love. Uh, you ne you never won. Away. He's never won. So the, the odds should be really good. They are good. Well, I mean, like, the payout, like 14 to 1. Sure, why not? I'd love to get past this part where I'm done talking to you and All right. these horses start running. <laughs> I'm just gonna put down enough honks that the 14 to 1 will buy me a house. Sure, done! <laughs> a bunch of inches. Okay, I'm just gonna <laughs> close my eyes and you take the honks you need on a system. Well, no, the, 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 the honks will come later. Okay. We have to wait for the horse race, which we everyone has been waiting for with much- Oh, you only want the honks. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, I take the keys back in front of my pocket. Yeah, I don't give a shit about that carriage. It's, it's confusing to me. Sure, oh wow, this is working out way better than I thought. This doesn't cost me anything. Ah. This is more attention than I've had in years. <laughs> and Susan's just loving it. Yeah. Oh All right, everyone. Sorry for the wait. Well, ready to start this horse race. Okay, so and I'm going to wander yeah. over to the the stables, I guess. Yeah. 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 Totally. And I'm going to try and like sneakily get into the stables and uh, whisper encouraging words into the the horse, like pounding cactus's ear, to like kind of rile him up and get him like really excited to race. Yeah. And then do you do you whisper like discouraging words to the other horses? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna nice. I'm gonna like try oh, and spook really them stacking and the like deck, really yeah. kind of. Oh. Oh, nice. shit up with the other horses yeah and yeah. like this this almost feels like a thing that you might have to ro roll for but i don't know you're just like ho honing in with your uh your previous skills and it like, says i can instantly bond with any horse uh, oh yeah well it's it's done already but okay. uh yeah you, 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 you just feel like this like manly energy just pulsing through your your through your lips as you so as i'm stroking pounding cactus and telling him <laughs> to pound the earth and the cacti beneath his feet, just yeah. as his namesake suggests he and should. He gets more vascular. He, yeah, all the all the veins in his <laughs> <laughs> meaty horse body are just like throbbing through his weird surface yeah. horse skin. And yeah, okay. his, uh, his, I lean his over to Butterson, <laughs> and I'm like, wow, look Run! how vascular yeah. that horse is. <laughs> yeah. Sorry? I just leaned over to Butterson, and I, I said, look how vascular that horse is. <laughs> Okay, I go yeah. back to the, the yeah. stand. Sorry, and, I wanted you I to feel the involved. Horse race. <laughs> you hadn't said much in a while. Are you betting, Buddison? I already bet. I bet first. Oh, shit. She was very quick you and efficient what? with her wager. Uh, the thing is, I have a sort of dis... Oh, shit, that's also an acronym. Well, you know, <laughs> maybe someday someone will invent a tincture that will help me pay attention, but as it stands, I have a hard time paying attention, and I kind of just back out yeah. of the... You right could on. probably buy some like cocaine wine at the fucking pharmacy cocaine if you wanted. Wine. Oh, cocaine wine. Yeah, oh. of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a staple here. Well, I suppose this is. This is now internal Mullock. I suppose <laughs> this is before the time I was <laughs> baptized as a Mormon or however you become a Mormon. So. Uh, there's and now no, Susan is thinking quietly in her own head. There's no <laughs> rules against drinking <laughs> yeah. wine. And I go over to get some cocaine wine. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're wandering off to get some coke wine and you hear a gunshot go off. Bang! Oh shit. And uh and the horses are off and like undisputed victory. Like they like pounding cactus is like slobbering and is like, <laughs> <laughs> like Yeah, that's how horses run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's different. It's like it's like a like he's just doing like a like how like a tiger's like leap forward. <laughs> he's like frothing at the mouth. Yeah, yeah. he's like foaming. Oh my he's getting word. A crazy pump. As the other, uh, as the other horse is just kind of like boo, spin in circles in his dust, and uh, oh, Benning works is just like the first place person gets it all. No, it, like... it, it depends on like order and stuff. Yeah, okay, but... so we're gonna figure out the order. Will you win money if your horse wins second place? It depends how you bet, because like there's different kinds of betting. You can bet for who you think is gonna be in like first, second, third. You can bet for like just first place. It just kind of like depends. Man, I don't know fuck all about horse betting. There's a horse betting thing. Here, yeah, yeah, it's quite fun. I Real mean, fun. if you want to come teach me to gamble, like show me how you bet your money, and uh, I'll I'll listen attentively. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll learn. So, uh, uh, pounding cactus just fucking destroys. Second place, stomping gravy. Yes. Third place, twirling boathouse, and in last place, clip flop. Oh no. Yeah, 
So uh, yeah, the the order comes through, and uh, it's a massive payout to uh, good old uh, Flint Steel here. Uh, Aunt Susan is pumped up. She's screaming over the railing, like, "Yeah, off to the glue factory, clip clop. Do they have glue? (laughs) (laughs) Do they have glue?" And uh, yeah, it's a big payout. Yeah, you're getting you're getting mad inches. Off to the meat packers, if not fourteen to one. So you did fourteen times five. Yeah. So that's ooh, ooh. 70 inches, 70, 70 inches wow. right then in there. And uh, yeah, Aunt Susan just bet a bunch. So I don't know you get like a, a farmhouse's worth. of. Yeah, I immediately take my inches in for a farmhouse. Yeah, like totally. Dr. Beans just like like he takes off his hat and it's like stomping it like kind of like Wario lost a race <laughs> kind of thing. It's like, ah, oh, damn, oh, piss and shit and farts and stuff. And, That's uh, classically how I imagine a person stomping a hat. I'm like, yeah, remember when Wario lost that race? <laughs> yeah, like in Mario Kart, he like throws his hat. On oh, does he too? Oh, right, I forgot about yeah. Mario Kart. He's real mad. I don't, I don't recognize Mario Karts after Mario Kart 64. Hmm. Double dash fair. is the best. Oh, Mario Kart. Dash, actually. Stupid. We'll talk about this later. Um, <laughs> and uh, stupid on stomping gravy. I did. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. And yeah. Susan turns to a random person yeah. next to her. Can you imagine how stupid the horse races would be if there was, like, one person riding the horse and one person on the back doing something else? Like, why don't you just have one person ride each horse? Racing's fine. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> She's wheel. just talking about horses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we don't have a wheel. <laughs> that's a wheel. All uh, their wagons are on, <laughs> like, sleds yeah, and they're just like... dragging across the <laughs> desert. Yeah. God, you know, I wish somebody would invent a better kind of wagon with some sort of, I don't know, a, a, a less friction intensive kind of wagon. Oh, you're talking Crazy. nonsense. That's hey. how our grandparents did it, and that's how their grandparents did it. That's how it. our grandchildren are going to do it, dragging a sled across sand. That's right. Um, Sorry, what's Stop happening gravy. in the You game? got 30, 30 inches. Just arbitrary, whatever, fuck yeah. That's fine. Yeah, there you go. I'm, quite, I'm happy with that. And Dr. Beans walks up to you and he's like, well, I've lost all of my honor <laughs> and and uh, four inches as well. And I'm sorry, Aunt Susan, but this is where our paths must diverge. I, I, cannot, I cannot chase you anymore. I've made a gentleman's agreement. I put a reassuring hand on the shoulder and say, if it's any consolation, Dr. Beans, you were never really in the race. <laughs> And he takes like you are, you he are, takes like ten ten damage like ten psychic damage. <laughs> maybe <laughs> this, <laughs> maybe this will mean something to you one day, Doctor Beans. But you are what we call in what my friend calls in the Austro- Austro-Hungarian Empire a beta cuck. A beta cuck. Well, hmm. don't worry, it's endearing in its own way. Well, at least I've got my business. But yet again, sure. I search search for love. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> they always say that. Sure. And uh, he like looks down and he's like, well, I think I've had about as much as I can handle for one day. You're sort of getting a sure John letter. Uh, <laughs> tragedy strikes Dr. Bean's heart once more. And uh, I, I bid you all do, and I hope you uh, do well. I'll just be selling beans until I can afford more inches so I can sure. lose it all again on love. I, I feel like quite bad, actually, for... for uh... Mr. Doctor Doctor Beans, um, even though I won, because I, I I'm a you know I'm a very gracious winner, um, so I was like kind of thinking about like his how his business is going and stuff, and I was like wait, wait, what, Mr. What, Beans, what? <laughs> you you may not have won a lady, but you have won a friend, and I was thinking, beans and chicken belong together. Beans and chicken. And bullets. How would you like to make a business deal? That's that's right. And he's he's like his he like he like his hat was like crumpled to his chest. He's like straightens up and he like puts it back on. He's like, <laughs> well, I reckon this ain't so bad. Yeah, you you have a you got a good selection of chicken and a good intuition on betting on horses. So just like my last business partner, the Shirley, this won't go tits up. <laughs> I'd be happy to. And he goes to shake your hand. Go shake his hand too, and then I, I open my thing and I I'd give him like a chicken drumstick. It's like like you give like a kid like a you know like cotton candy thing and send them off to the fair. Oh, I thought you were gonna it. put it in your palm and like. Oh, that would be cool like too, actually. But thing. no, that looks good. And he's like, well, to to business and friendship, and he uh, takes a bite of the chicken and 
Uh, yeah, making business deals, man. You you feel you feel a little bit more powerful as well. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Wow! Everyone got what they wanted, and they learned a little about about their <laughs> manliest self. What do you uh? What do you think? Uh, I don't know why I can't remember this character's name because I invented it. Flint Steel. What do you think, <laughs> Flint Steel? What's your? Do you have a sort of uh, mo- Kevin Smith style Silent Bob monologue? You've been kind of brewing this whole time to really tie thing, close things off, and put so a my, button on the whole my story. Pants feeling... No, I'm not done interrupting oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> I also think you're very. Uh, a distressingly handsome in a kid rock kind of way. Oh, that doesn't make any sense. I'm going to shut up now. So me annoyed at this uh, person's persistence at pursuing me and having no sexual interest in her. <laughs> Cause I am, uh, I am secretly a woman, even though I somehow have, a now 79 inch cock are you, are you saying that women can't be interested in women is that weird no i'm not but my character is not okay uh and it's not because uh susan and susan is a woman because like because uh, she's I, haggard it's because, <laughs> it's because she's, she's haggard and annoying and desperate and she won't stop chasing me <laughs> i i look at her you know and, there's nothing manlier than recognizing insecurity and staying away from it and setting boundaries. So exactly. I really think that he, that they win. So what I yeah. do, <laughs> what I do is I look her in the eyes and I reveal to her. I actually, I like walk up to her and I whisper in her ear that I'm secretly a woman. And, <sighs> and I tell her that if she needs proof, I will provide it. Damn. That's a great place to end. I think. Yeah. That's, that's a little, uh, little, little act break. Could you build a snowman at gunpoint? Uh, like how big? Thirty minutes, probably. It depends. Yeah, on the size. I feel. Also, it depends on the snow. Mm. Like how sticky is the snow? Or what if it was like a really dry? Oh, it would be a <laughs> fucking snowman. <laughs> it's like it won't bind. <laughs> You're just like mounding it into a yeah. hill. I'm Pathetic. <laughs> You could probably build a snowman if your blood was soaked in the snow. Ah, yes, that's his thing. Who was rocking the gum? You almost got in the garbage can. Oh, did it not go in? Sorry. Oh, I was stuck on the lid. That's that's that can happen. All right. Well, I'm gonna get a beer. Does anybody want a beer? I got one. Thanks, Susan. Join the life of this party. Yeah, the life of this party. Imagine a full party of Susans. Oh, uh, yes. just go to New Jersey. New Jersey, yeah. No, I'm from Vermont. Vermont. <laughs> oh, you're you from sound- upstate. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. You know, I have a niece who lives there. You know, it's not she- too late for make every character of it. <laughs> every character and Susan. It is pretty good. It's- you, you've a- <laughs> arrived at Susan Town. <laughs> the mayor, Susan, greets you and says... <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a new, that's going to be a new, like, down the road adventure. <laughs>